it is right there. Such a romantic anthem as we get things started on this Wednesday afternoon. Middle of the week, end of the month, Baloo and Brooks. Wednesday, R.J. Saunders, Wednesday. And Wednesday's a great day, right? Especially at 3 o'clock because you can see the 5 o'clock whistle and then everything is kind of down pattern towards the weekend. But let's get right to it, Brooks. Christmas games on a Wednesday. Happy or sad if the Jaguars were to draw that responsibility? I would not like that as a person who has a lot of family in town and likes to focus on Christmas. But if it's not the Jaguars, then I'll enjoy it because then we can just have it on the TV and not have to worry about it. But obviously uh, for us, we have to pay attention to every single second of every Jaguars game. So if it's on Christmas Day, it's going to put a wrench in the plans. What about you? Um, I love watching the games a year ago. Okay. Uh, the viewership was tremendous. Sure. I mean, families get together. We have no problem with it on Thanksgiving. We have no problem with it on New Year's Eve and New Year's. We had Christmas Eve last year, yeah. and we've had that before. It, I think a home game would be a hassle, okay? As much as we have diehard fans here in town that would show up, I mean, it's for kids. It's for families, and many people come in. Um it would be better off to be a road game, but then again, I would feel bad for those who would actually have to go and cover that event. That means they would miss Christmas Eve and Christmas. I, the reason why I raise it is, you know, it feels like at times the Jaguars are kind of like, you know, life cereal from the 70s where give it to Mikey, Mikey will try it. You know, sure. Mike would, the Jags are kind of that way, right? They still get picked on by so many people, including the NFL, and they have... You can't add the London mixture into it because Shad Khan wants to be in London. But there were, you know, concerns about, oh, my God, are they going to go to Mexico as well? Are they going to play in Germany as well? They're the first team ever to be out there for a week and have a home and away game. On the surface, it makes complete sense. If you're going to force one of these two road teams to play a game on a Wednesday, doesn't the Jaguars kind of fit into that category based on the 29 years so far? Of this franchise? I get what you're saying, but I bet that the NFL thinks of a Christmas Day game or Christmas night game as a primetime game, and they don't always love the Jaguars in those primetime Well, you're correct about that. There's no doubt. If if that's how they view it, even though to us on a Wednesday Mm -hmm. and being Christmas, and and Christmas is about so many things other than football, but to the NFL, they probably view that as a primetime window, so they probably wouldn't want to give that to Jacksonville. By the way, I think Jaguars fans, tell me if you agree or disagree. I think Jaguars fans would actually appreciate the Jaguars not playing in London, but they'd be fine with a Germany game once here or a Mexico game another year because, A, that takes the whole the Jags are moving to London thing at least off the table for a little while, even though most people know that's not going to happen. And, B, that gives them the ones who do travel internationally to see the Jaguars play. It gives them different – Places to go visit. Right. Well, let's be crystal clear about this. There's only one person in the world who wants to play in London, and that's Shot Khan. Right. No one else does. Well, in the regardless NFL of what executives. they say. Yeah. Regardless of what they say. I mean, that's the way it is. But you could have a game. You could have Jacksonville and Vegas on Christmas Day. You could have Jacksonville and Philadelphia. The return of Doug Peterson to where he won a Super Bowl. And think of the drama there uh, in Chicago. Frigid Soldier Field. On Christmas Day, that would be a noon start for us back here uh, in, in the great state of Florida. Uh, you could have a divisional matchup. I, I just – I hope it's not the case because – and I think what you said probably supports this argument the best. Jacksonville last year had those – had that incredible run – during that seven-game win streak, and, and four of those wins in 2022, they were down by double digits, and they found a way to come back and win. They were down 27 nothing to play us, found a way to come back and win. They were such a hot team. We'll get into some of these odds a little bit later. They're not the hot team right now. They're going to be projected to be second in the division behind the Houston Texans. So maybe it's Houston who instead is the team that ends up playing. I, the NFL does want teams that they believe are – uh, hut teams and playoff ready, a year ago, I think it would have been a better chance of oh, Jacksonville sure. going. This year, maybe not as much. Well, and think about the two primetime games that come right to the top of your mind from last season. 
The Monday Nighter against the Bengals. Stinker. December 4th. Mm -hmm. The Jaguars, like you said, did not play well. And then the Sunday Nighter against Baltimore when the Jaguars only scored a touchdown and lost 23-7. to So, Mm -hmm. I don't, again, I don't know that the NFL is going to look at the Jaguars' record on on those primetime games from last season and say, yeah, they deserve more. They're Mm -hmm. not. Wanted to divert just for a moment away from the fact that Florida State kicked Florida's behind last night. The mercy rule. That is rule, very true. Fourteen to three. Yeah. Did you? You had left by this point in time, but did you see the fact that there was a grand slam involved in that uh, in that fourteen run inning or uh, game? I, 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 was it a grand? I thought it was there a three-runner. There was okay. a grand slam in the eighth inning, I want to say. Okay. Uh, by Farrow, Daniel Farrow. He had but, a couple uh, of home runs, five ribbies. I, I wasn't aware of the fact yeah. that it was a uh, a grand slam. But it was a great night. I it mean, that wins. Whether it, you're a Florida fan or a Florida State fan, yeah. obviously way better if you're a Florida State fan. And, and you feel a lot better about your ball club getting back on track after last weekend. And it's the first time, like we just talked about before the show started, first time FSU has won in Jacksonville. Since 2015. Right. If they didn't win this year, we got to put the COVID rule. Years. We could put the COVID in year. That's true. 2020 and 2021, they did not have the games. Here. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was looking back and forth at you know the all-time records and and everything and how Mike Martin forever had a uh, had a uh, an edge over Florida, but I want to say Mike Martin lost like his last 11 games. I think he did as manager for Florida is- State, and then his son, as bad as his son was, he had success against he did. Florida. And then that was right before COVID because Florida was undefeated. And then that's, I think, when the last time. No, they didn't play in Jacksonville. That's right. No. Florida was undefeated when they first met uh, in Gainesville, I think. But, yeah, uh, it was a grand slam uh, that sent everybody home to make it 14-3. to three. Yeah. So It was I mean, cool it was, to be out there, though. It was though. punishment for those Florida pitchers. I know they used at least six. But, yeah, it's such a great environment. And, like we said, it's almost always sold out every single year. And you saw one home run for the Florida. That was the only three runs Florida scored all night. You know, and we talked about that during the pregame, about how that wind was blowing it right was. to left. Yep. I thought that was a lazy fly ball. It yep. just kept carrying. The ball he hit in the third inning to right center mm-hmm. was a much better hit baseball, and that was for a double. I, I thought it was a lazy fly ball, and the wind just – and, yep. and, and that affected going. balls going down that left field line. Uh, last night. So, yeah, that was good. I saw a lot of people out there. I know you did as well. Uh, just, you know, so many 1010XL, 92.5 FM listeners and and, and just a lot of good folks uh, out there. But I- I'll tell you, I, you know, and I left in the sixth um, when they had a two-run lead, four-run lead. They, they kept, you know, adding to their lead. But there wasn't a Florida State fan out there that felt confident about this because of what happened at Clemson. So, that's going to um, make you feel a lot better now. Well, yeah, I guess it does. I mean, they've given up, what did you say it was, 22 runs or 20 runs? 23 runs and 8.2 innings. Uh, man, from the I mean, it was just terrible. And and their starter last night couldn't get the ball over the plate. He walked a couple of batters. He, he didn't start, you know, ahead of anyone. He didn't start with a 0-1 count, getting a strike one. Everything, he was coming from behind by throwing balls, and that led to that three-run home run. But, you know, they settled down, played well, so... Uh, they'll do it again, what, in a few weeks? They'll play the uh, finale. This time will be over in God's country. That's right. Uh, also, shout-out to Daniel Cantu. He was the one who also had uh, several ribbies last night. He is from Creekside High. So he, I saw, said that he grew up watching this game and coming to this game as a fan, as a little kid, and then getting to play in it, obviously, was super cool for him. we got a lot to do over the next three hours. They're going to be really busy. Just threw that out on Christmas. Uh, give us your thoughts on it. I mean, you worry enough. I don't want to add to your worry list, but but a, but a lot, I think a lot of fans would love it. Didn't the Jaguars play the Patriots on Christmas Day back in like 2008, maybe 2006, somewhere along those lines? I want to say the Jaguars hosted the Patriots. It might have been Christmas Eve, but it was it was right around Christmas, set many years ago. I know my last year as sideline reporter, we were in New York on New Year's Day because I was walking the streets of my own. I you know, I'm a big mafia guy. I went to uh, Sparks Steakhouse, and it was closed. And, of course, that is the infamous place where uh, where apparently John Gotti and Sammy the Bull Gravano uh, murdered Paul Castellano. The, um, you know, the he was it. He was the godfather of the, of the Gambino family. And then because of that, John Gotti promoted himself and, and took over the reins. But we were there on Christmas Day. We had a game. The day after Christmas, I'm trying to remember 
I don't know. I, I don't remember 2009. It's that happened was, before. So in it was Christmas Eve 2006 is the one I'm thinking of. And then December 27th, 2009, the Jaguars were okay. at the Patriots. I think a lot of fans would like it. I, 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 I honestly do believe, though, most fans would rather have that be a road game. You know, where you can sit in front of the television or, or listen to it on the radio and as opposed to going through the normal routine of, uh, of getting up and, you know, you have your kids and everything and then trying to get over, you know, to the stadium for a football game. But, but that's kind of lost in it all. What, what, what I really am interested in, because the way that this league works with the 18 weeks of the 17 games, how are they going to be able to put this together? I mean, do you play Sunday and then play Wednesday, or if you're off it's, on the you're, Sunday prior, you're Saturday. They yep. announced that you'll play the teams will, that are playing Christmas Day. Still will play not Saturday. enough. Still not enough. They said that's the same turnaround time as when you play Thursday night football. Yeah, they don't care. Let's be honest, they do not care. So you're gonna go Saturday, Wednesday, bye. You can't go Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday. You, there's no way you can play three games in eight right. days. I, I agree. So, yes, most likely those teams would get a bye, but that's kind of a late bye. I wouldn't want my bye. It's to a be very late Christmas. bye. Yeah. It is. It, and, you know, we were always under the, we were under the assumption last year that after two weeks in London, Jacksonville would get that bye. They didn't. So, just uh, until this is formally announced, and the way that the NFL does things is in the month of April, we already know the opponents for Jacksonville. All 32 teams know their home and away opponents, uh, opponents. But you don't get the dates until at some point, Usually in the month of May. As a matter of fact, I think it usually comes out like the next two weeks, um, if I remember correctly, and then it's the draft a couple of weeks after that. It may be in May. I forget. All these things tend to run together for me. I, I do know this for sure. It's either in April or May. All right. So it's within the next 60 days when the schedule will actually be released. But to me, that's the biggest issue with all of this is how do you put together – you know, a midweek game. You you can't have a midweek game in the NFL. You you just can't. You have it on Thursday. You have it on Saturday. You have it on Sunday. And you have it on Monday. This is not a coach alive or a player alive that is going to support a game being played on a Wednesday. Yeah, I'm thinking out loud now. I guess those teams that play on Christmas Day could get a Thursday night game the following week, and then that would give them – eight days of rest, so you'd have to maybe work it like that if they had already had their bye. But eventually we're going to get, like we talked about yesterday, we're going to get to 18 games and and more byes. Uh, So the reason you don't know when the schedule will come out is because the NFL hasn't announced it yet, but people are thinking somewhere around like Wednesday, May 11th, Thursday, May 12th, somewhere in there. Okay, so it is in May, not April. So that's, you know, we're 30, we're 29 days away from the draft. So that's coming up in about 35, 40 days or so. Not too far away as far as that is concerned. All right, if you want to get involved in that, love to hear your opinion on whether or not you'd like a, a, a Christmas day or night game. I, I would imagine it would be a 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock type of setup, home or away. You can get us on the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. That number is 641-1010. All right, opening comments brought to you by Schmunez Vision. Known Dr. Neil Schmunez forever. I tell the story often because it's true. Eight and a half years ago, went in for a simple eye examination, was told you got major problems in your right eye. I had surgery the very next morning, performed by Dr. Neil Schmunez. There's so much more than just an update and an examination for contacts and glasses. We're talking about real serious things that involve your eyes, including high-quality medical and surgical eye care. The word cataract is frightening for so many people because you probably know someone who's had an issue, right? And surgery was forced, and it was unwarranted, and... You know, there are other ways that you can prevent this, including, you know, really several remedies that are available. Everyone is different. Your eyes are different. Uh, I know you're aware of that. If it is surgery, however, you're talking about more than 30 years worth of experience when you include Dr. Catherine Schmunez. So it's a family organization out at the beach. To get everything from them, just go to Schmunez Vision. That is Schmunez Vision Care, you can see. Randy Mueller coming up. In about 15 minutes, the former general manager will talk Jaguars draft with him. He is from The Athletic. A little bit later on the show, we'll hear from Kadri Ismail out in Baltimore. Of course, the Jaguars uh, have brought in a couple of players from the Baltimore Ravens, so we'll get an opportunity 
uh, to talk to Ismail about his thoughts there. All of that is upcoming along with Lauren Brooks and R.J. Saunders. My name is Rick Belit. This is Eli Manning. The Giants have won the Super Bowl. Your MVP, ladies and gentlemen, Eli Manning. On 1010XL Jacksonville Sports Radio. Now, the Florida Gator Report on 1010XL. Brought to you by Darley's Plumbing. Number six, Florida Gator baseball fell to number 17, Florida State, last night. Jack Caglione hit his 12th home run and picked up his 15th multi-hit game, but it wasn't enough in the 14-3 loss. Florida has won 22 of the last 28 meetings, but FSU has won both so far this season. They meet again April 9th in Tallahassee. Hi, folks. It's Frank Franzi. I'm so thankful to Darley's Plumbing and all the extensive plumbing work they did at the Bragan Baseball Complex, our new walk-off charities field. The Darley's team was responsive and professional at every step on this project. And the result is a facility I love. Darley's is a company I trusted for my plumbing needs, and you can too. Thanks for those kind words, Frank. At Darley's Plumbing, we don't just do residential house calls. We're your first draft pick for commercial business plumbing too. Darley's Plumbing, where quality counts. I get this thing unwrapped here. Duval! Pros, pros, what in the world are you doing working on your Duval? That's right, and I really identify with Duval. You live in St. John's County, knucklehead. I mean the Duval sub, the Daily's Dash Duval. Turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheeses. Lettuce, tomato, crispy and fresh, you know, like me. I'm sure there's a Daily's Dash sub that sums you up. The boss. Because, of course. Oven roasted beef, monster cheese, roasted mushrooms, caramelized onions. It's the boss of all subs. Only available for me. That's just not true. What do you mean? I walked in the other day, screamed, you know it, and said, a boss for a boss. Well, no matter who you are, there is a Daily's Dash sandwich or sub for you. Go find yours. They may even make you a boss. I'm sure they will, because it is Daily's Dash. Where more is better. And you got that right. Frank Franzi here for South State Bank. Look, I depend on South State for so many things, personal accounts, small business banking, and banking for our nonprofit. South State Bank can help you reach all your financial goals too, whether you're just starting out or focused on financial planning. South State offers convenience with their online and mobile banking. You should check out South State Bank as they were recently recognized by Forbes as one of America's best banks. That's South State Banking Forward, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hello, First Coast. I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL Green for Life. Big Chief Tire has been Jacksonville's trusted tire expert for over 60 years. Frank Frangie here. The new season is upon us, and they are here to ensure your journeys are smooth and worry-free. Gear up for any travel by scheduling service at one of their five locations. From tire rotations to custom wheels and more, the experts at Big Chief are here to ensure your vehicle is ready. Visit the website at BigChiefTire.com or call 904-932-0950 to schedule an appointment today. What's the weekend in sports look like? I'm Dan Hicken, and I'll give you my take on the weekend with Dan. Find it on YouTube and Facebook. Weekend with Dan, brought to you by Stone Core. We do outdoors better. There are trucks, and then there's the truck, the GMC Sierra. Frank Frangie here, with available features like the V8 engine, the ultimate luxury interior, and of course, the available world's first six function multi pro tailgate. Nimnik Buick GMC has the largest inventory of GMC Sierras in the area. This month, save up to $10,000 off new GMC Sierra 1500s or enjoy rates as low as 2.9% financing. Head to Nimnik today. GMC, we are professional grade. This month, Best Bet transforms into your ultimate pot of gold. Dishing out over $600,000 in poker prize money across our Jacksonville, Orange Park, and St. Augustine card rooms. Feeling lucky? Try your hand in an array of exciting card games from three-card poker, Texas Hold'em, Omaha, and many, many more. Best Bet, perfect for poker aficionados and casual players looking for a fun time with friends. Players must be 18 or older. For more information, visit bestbetjax.com. That's bestbetjax.com. 
Mark Watson with Hardball Creative. Cooler weather is here, so call Hardball and let us put your company logo on some beady caps. Think about it. Stylish, pump on top, adorable. Hardball Creative. Hardball does it all. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. All right, Blue and Brooks with you tonight till 6, typically with you 6 to 8. That'll be the case again beginning on Monday. Frank and Hayes on vacation. RJ Saunders. Is uh, producing the program. It, you know, I made a point on Monday, Lauren, about leadership and how I think it's not as important today as it used to be. And I cited the only reason being is today's athlete is far more self-serving, it, way more about himself than he is about a team, even though football is the ultimate team sport. Well, I was getting into the grandfatherly comments by Calais Campbell and how I told you that I really thought there was a big time division on that defense and it really came across that Calais did all the right things said all the right things I don't forget when Leon Searcy and I were in Baltimore Calais took out Josh Allen as a rookie and Leon and I was Leon Searcy and I were sitting at a bar and it was a steakhouse and in walked uh, Josh Allen and, and Campbell and It's like Josh Allen didn't say a word. It was as Calais talking and Allen was listening. You know, a a veteran talking to a rookie. So there are examples of of when this happens and it's real positive. But it was kind of funny because the joke with the Jags is that Jalen Ramsey wasn't going to listen to Calais Campbell. Telvin Smith wasn't going to listen. Dante Fowler wasn't going to listen. Aaron Colvin wasn't going to listen. Yannick Ngakwe was going to laugh at him. And it was a great team with, with, with... Type A personalities, but they didn't see eye to eye. Well, lo and behold, DJ Chark said this last uh, last night. He was doing a podcast uh, with Baltimore's Marlon Humphrey, and he said this about the 2018 Jaguars defense. This might be like OTAs. The D-line would be beefing sometimes with like, the corners. They had a really good defense, Saxonville. The linemen are like, we getting all these picks and takeaways because we getting to the quarterback. Corners are like, y'all getting these sacks because we're covering everybody. Is it the D-line and making this defense good or the DBs? That's toxic right there now, y'all. Nah, that was... Wow, we usually just be like, you know, we working together. That was A.J. Bowie and Jalen Ramsey, though. It was tough. That was... They, that y'all had... The, but that D-line Calais. was good, too. Was it it was. It was. We had Calais, Malik. And Aaron Colvin was a loud mouth too. And it wasn't friendly banter. It was serious. They they would play, and they would fight with, you know, I mean, Yannick Ngakwe fought with Fowler. He fought with Marcel Darius. Jalen wouldn't listen to anyone. Um you know, Elijah Hood, the defensive line coach, I remember him trying to settle down Yannick Ngakwe, and uh, Ngakwe was just attacking him. Four-letter word after four-letter word. I know this stuff happens routinely throughout the NFL, but it it does kind of support my opinion on this, Warren, that with Eric Armstead coming in, all of a sudden it's going to change the entire complexion of a locker room. I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. I'm not as worried about what's going on inside the locker room with this team, with that team. In, in 2017, certainly all was going well, and in 2018 it all fell apart. And that culminated, you know, as far as publicly with the incident in London with Barry Church and Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson and DJ Hayden all getting detained by police and things like that. But this locker room, the culture, I think, is completely different than that locker room. What I hope is that Mitch Morse on the offensive front and Eric Armstead on the defensive front are just a lot better of football players than the guys that were there before them. And they lead by example. So I don't need the rah-rah or the learn it my way type of thing in the off season. What I need is for the guys that are playing football to be able to help the Jaguars run the football and help the Jaguars stop the run. That's what I need out of them. If nobody wants to listen to them, fine. But as long as they are physically much better than the people that were playing in their positions last year, then this is going to be a better football team. Well, there's better human beings on this team. There's better defensive. I don't know if they're better. They're not better football players, but they're better human beings. 
Jalen's a bad guy. I, I love him. He's a bad guy. Yannick Ngakwe was a bad guy. Okay? Jared Odrick was a bad uh, Jared Godwin, uh, I mean, they, they were bad. Telvin, after, I tell you what, you can say all you want about Paul, uh, uh, about Calais Campbell. What hurt Telvin Smith was two things. Paul Puzlesny leaving was his mentor, was his idol, and then he, he got, got the paid. And then he got the bag. <laughs> Yeah. But, but See, but, I didn't think Jan was ever a bad guy. I thought, yes, things went south here eventually, but I never I never saw him as a punk or anything like that. Well, I did. You know, traveling with the team, sure. and, 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 you know, my, my rule, uh, the rule was when I was a sideline reporter, report on what you see, not what you hear. Mm-hmm. But I heard. And I've never, I, will, I would, out of respect for the former gig, I would never come out and say what he said. But I heard it. And I talked with others and part of the radio broadcast team and, and, and what have you? And and uh, I, I have a I have a different opinion with Unique and Gakwe. And, and, and I did a weekly show when we were midday chalk with Unique and Gakwe. I I don't see guys outside of maybe Roy Robertson Harris. He he's a little off the wall. I don't see guys like that on this current defense. The question is, are they as talented as they once were? We'll find out. I mean, Cisco's a good guy. Campbell's a good guy. Yeah, the the corners I think are are very talented, especially if the Jaguars add one. I don't know that they're as good as those guys that we yeah. saw in 2017. Uh, you have uh, you, you, why don't we why don't we save that for after reading? Because I, I we're getting a lot of response here on the text line six four one ten ten brought to you by Lifetime Enclosure. Or do, can we play it now? Or do we need to get the Randy Mueller? What, what what's best for us? Let's play it right now. No, we'll get to it in a little bit. All right, let's bring in Randy Mueller. Yeah, this we're not going to get away from this topic uh, because it is worthy of a conversation. We'll reintroduce it a little bit later on in the program. Um, I would lo- John Osher and I talked about it yesterday. I, I would love for the experience of uh, of Duvernay and Morris and Davis and Armstead to to really help this current team. I I just happen to be one of those who believes that leadership is. Uh, is overplayed nowadays. Today's athlete is far more concerned about himself and not the team. Not just here in Jacksonville. I'm talking about across every single game that we love and we cover. All right, much more to do. Take you up until uh, 6 o'clock. Let's bring in Randy Mueller, former general manager. He's with The Athletic. Let's get to the Jaguars draft. Hello, you're on the air. There's more to 1010XL than radio. 1010XL is multimedia. All communication lines are clear. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Find 1010XL on your social channels. Lamb of God and Mastodon live. Celebrating 20 years of Ashes of the Wake and Leviathan. July 23rd, Daly's Place. With special guests, Carrie King and Malevolence. Lamb of God and Mastodon's Ashes of Leviathan Tour. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Frank Frangie here. Bono's Pit Barbecue is celebrating 75 years of serving up legendary barbecue in Jacksonville. And to celebrate, they've brought the old-fashioned basket back for a limited time, and it's better than ever. The classic open-faced barbecue pork sandwich served on Bono's signature bread topped with crispy french fries, and your choice of sauce is just $7.50. It's sure to fill you up with flavor and memories. The limited-time offer starts on March 4th, so get your old-fashioned basket for $7.50 today, and if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Make your outdoor living perfect with Art of Natural Stone. Pavers, patios, gravel, pool decks, and more. Using all natural stone design, and they do the installation. Visit Art of Natural Stone on Route 1 near Bartram Springs or on Beach Boulevard. Are you 18 years or older, just got married, just got divorced, or have children? Listen up. Have you done your last will and estate planning? If you have questions, call Matt Hinson with the Hinson Law Firm. Reach him at 527-1700, offices Jacksonville, Florida, and don't let the state decide your fate. This state in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On March 27, 1994, at the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass, Greg Norman set scoring record of 24-under to finish four strokes ahead of Fuzzy Zoller. 
If you're getting engaged and want to spend way more than you should on a diamond, go ahead and shop the Big Chain Diamond Store. They love taking your money. But if you want the lowest price guaranteed, shop Beard's Diamonds. Right now, get five years, 0% financing with nothing down. This is Hayes Carlion for Skylight Elite. Have you ever thought about aircraft ownership as another potential revenue stream and as a tool for tax savings? Put your tax money to work for you while enjoying the benefits of private personal travel. Skylife Elite has over a decade of experience in business aviation and can guide you through the process with their expert staff. Call my friends over at Skylife Elite at 490-9332 or find them at flyskylife.com to get the rundown on everything owning an airplane can do for you. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from My Bookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of the madness with My Bookie. My Bookie is a one stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today, only with my book. It's time for some spring fever March specials going on now at Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned. Mia here, and how does this sound? Just $500 down and $288 per month gets you a pre-owned 2021 Toyota Corolla. Or you choose a pre-owned 2021 Camry, RAV4, or Tacoma for just $500 down and $388 per month. Plus, Arlington's Credit for Everyone program and 30-day exchange. Don't wait. Save thousands and shop ArlingtonToyota.com today. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. It is time now to talk with Randy Mueller, former NFL Executive of the Year, now with The Athletic. Randy, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Good to be with you. So how would you grade the Jaguars free agency class, adding guys like Mitch Morse, Eric Armstead, Gabe Davis, Darnell Salvage? What kind of grade would you give this team? Oh, I think I like what they've done. I would definitely give them probably an A-, minus, maybe a B-plus somewhere in there. I've said all along, Jacksonville has a really talented team, especially last year. They didn't play up to expectations, but I think they've only gotten better with these additions. And some might say, well, you're trading Gabe, uh, Gabe Davis for Ridley. But there, there's some other reasons that they made that move as well. So I like what they've done. Um, I think it's a matter of now playing good to, to keep up with the improvements that looks to me like they've made on paper. Randy, I remember years ago as a Florida State grab when you went, uh, when you were uh, with Seattle and you got Walter Jones, he became a Hall of Famer. Um, I think that's the biggest problem with this team, and it has been the biggest problem with this team, that offensive line. And, you know, they're yeah. walking back four-fifths of them outside of Mitch Morris who they got from uh, Buffalo. Your thoughts on, on this offensive line, and, and are they doing enough to protect Trevor Lawrence? 
Well, I would tend to agree with you, but I would say that about half the teams in the NFL. I don't think anybody spends enough time these days on building the foundation. It seems like they are driven by the bells and whistles of the perimeter players, and sometimes that is what everybody wants to talk about. But I'm with you. I think the offensive line in this case with Jacksonville, you'd have to say it underachieved, whether it's Cam Robinson or even some of the other moves that they've made. They haven't played as good as they're capable of. I just think there's more in that tank, and however they get it out of them, better. Um, I think Mitch Morse is a veteran, experienced voice of many reasons in the, in the locker room, on the field. I think that's an upgrade for them just because I think he'll be the communicator. He'll be the, you know, the adult in the room. Not that there was immaturity, but you know what I mean. He'll be the leader of that group. And I think that's always good when you can add a veteran of that status. Uh, I, I'm sure Brandon Sheriff says his part of leadership as well, but I don't think you can have enough of those guys that are willing to push each other and be held accountable. And, and that's kind of what I've seen in Jacksonville, a little bit of underachieving for whatever reason with that group. Three years with Trevor Lawrence and, and everything that you can throw in there, the uh, the abomination of, of Urban Meyer, the fact that they couldn't run the ball a year ago, uh, his injuries and the problems with the offensive line. What would your assessment be of Trevor Lawrence three years in? My assessment would be that talent only gets you so far. I think everybody was in agreement. There was a consensus when he came out. He was clearly the the guy with the highest ceiling. He made all the throws since he was a freshman in college. We all saw it. But there just hasn't been the progression. You mentioned a couple of the reasons why. But I'm with you, and I think this is kind of what you're getting at. He's got to play better. His game has to be raised. He's got to find a way, in my opinion, and it takes time to slow things down and get the ball out quicker. That's really what it comes down to is processing information and getting it out quick so that your perimeter players have a chance. And that's where it's kind of lagged to this point. You can say oh, the running game hasn't been there. I agree. That's part of it. But it still comes down to him seeing, processing, and getting it out to the right people accurately. And that just hasn't progressed yet. It takes some more time. Now, we all saw the talent at Clemson, but there was also a lot of critics of, that system has got to be expunged from him before he can learn a new system and a new vision and new coaching points. So it just takes time. It certainly does, and I think we're all learning that uh, in you know, the growing pains going along with that. As far as Doug Peterson's concerned, obviously he's won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia, and now he, he's gotten closer with the Jaguars uh, than most coaches have. But what do you think as far as this season goes and, and how Doug's approach will be with Trevor and the rest of the team? Well, I don't think it's going to change a lot. I think he hopes for progressive, you know, uh, uh, actions from Trevor's point of view. Sure, they're going to have to run the ball a little better, but I think he thinks that the defense has to be better. It has to be uh, a a defense that's feared. I've said for the last couple years, Jacksonville got a ton of really good players on defense, and they're really hard to block, but yet they don't seem to play well as a group, and I thought that's what they did last year. I like Ryan Nelson, I think he's a good coach. I've known Chris Richard since he was a player. I think the philosophy there will change. I think you will see a different defensive scheme that I think will be uh, more of a force and more of a let these guys play because they're so darn athletic. So I think to answer your question, Doug's going to rely more on the defense, hope he can run the ball a little bit, but hope Trevor can just take the next step, which hasn't happened yet. Randy Mueller, our guest, former general manager of the Saints and the Dolphins, also absolutely rebuilt the Seattle Seahawks before those two stops. Uh, he joins Lauren Brooks and Rick Ballou. The game has totally changed since your time with those three organizations, but you know, there's a feeling here in Jacksonville by many that, that Trent Bulky's too involved uh, with the coaching, too involved with the actual uh, game planning. It, we all understand it's his job to go out and get the players. Did you have a say about calling plays? Did you want your head coach calling plays? Did that ever come into the conversation? Because two days ago, Doug Peterson still doesn't know if he's going to take that away again this year from Press Taylor. Yeah, that's, that's some murky waters, that's for sure. When I was a GM, and I was with the Chargers up until three years ago, so I haven't been away from it that long. Um, I I never felt like I wanted to be involved in any of those play-calling type duties. But having said that, for example, our coach in New Orleans, Jim Hazlitt, wanted me to have an earpiece and a headphone just so I could listen in so that we could then 
talk about things from the same level of understanding, which was really good for me. And I think there's a difference between being involved, as you mentioned, and, and I don't know where Trent is in this, but being involved, but yet at the same time being able to hold everybody accountable. And I think that is the job of the GM. He's got to ask questions. They've got to be, hold people accountable. And to do that, you've got to have a certain level of knowledge. So I don't look at that as being uh, in meddling. I do want to know what's going on because I want to discuss it. I don't want mediocrity in any way, but in order to get us over the hump and sometimes have those awkward questions, I do have to be in the team meeting. I do have to be in these meetings or that meeting. So I'm not looking to do that over anybody's shoulder or to question them other than just to know so that we can converse about it. And, and what makes sense to them needs to make sense to me as well. What do you think of Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers? I think Jim Harbaugh was a great hire for them. I thought that all along when, when they – decided to make the change and, and add another coach, I thought he would be the best fit. Having spent the last 10 years of, of my NFL career with the Chargers, I always felt like it was a little bit of club med, right? It was a little bit of too easy going, that we were okay being mediocre. And I know Jim Harbaugh won't bring that attitude. He's going to grind people. He's going to make people uneasy a little bit. And that is an element that's been missing at the Chargers forever. And it probably starts with ownership. It's just everything was okay. And I think Jim will be more demanding. He's already impressed his vision and his philosophies on the people there. And I think him and Joe Ortiz, the GM, will get along great. And I think they will find a way to push harder than that franchise has ever been pushed. And I think that's the thing that they need. They need to be pushed. They have some talent. They just haven't been pushed enough. Randy, the Jaguars select at number 17. What do you believe they should do? Uh, it's going to be a bad answer. You're probably not going to want to hear this, but I think they should take the best player and the highest one rated on their board. I don't think you can forecast what's going to be there at 17, but here's what I do know to be true, having the experience and been through it a few times. They'll get somebody in the top probably 13 or 14 on their board. So let's line up a dozen of these guys, and you might be shocked at what falls our way. I don't think the Jaguars are one player away. If they can find a player that they think is really good but yet it does fill a little bit of a need, that would be a home run. Mm. But don't, re- don't reach for a need when you're still going to bypass really good players at other positions. You can't have enough good players. It's got to make sense. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're not going to take a, a backup to Trevor Lawrence at 17. Yeah. I think you know, you know what I mean. They've got to find as many good players. If it's another offensive tackle, you can never go wrong. And Everybody always laughs when they say, what do you want them to take? I want them to take a big guy or a fast guy. That's as simplistic as I can make it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's fascinating because I'm told that they really like Brock Bowers, you know, the tight end out of yeah. Georgia. But they just used a second rounder on Brenton Strange, and they extended a contract for Evan Ingram, and they have a blocking uh, tight end in, in um, uh, Luke Farrell. So is, is that an example of the need is set, and even if he falls – you take him anyway, or, or you go with another position player? Well, I think tight end's a little different scenario, just because I think a tight end is a tight end. And that's a guy who I think you end up having to scheme to get open. They, to me, already have that covered with Evan Ingram. You mentioned it. I just think you need to find a guy that you can get on the field every snap and not have to scheme him to be involved. I kind of view tight end, and this is not to down-talk tight ends, but kind of like safeties. They're... There, you've got to have them, but I'm not going to spend a premium or capital to get one at this point, that's for sure. So after Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels and probably Drake May, which quarterback goes off the board next? Well, I think he, I'm not sure you got the top three that in, are in my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think, you like McCarthy? Uh, Pray tell. Yeah, I think Caleb goes first and there's a gap after that, but if for my money, if I was going to pick one, it would be J.J. McCarthy. Um, I have the le- least questions about him. I see everything I need to see in projecting him to the next level. And, again, I'm not really – I don't care when he gets picked. I just think he'll be the better pro of those other guys. I think the other guys will be good pros. I, I like Jaden Daniels. I think him and McCarthy are very similar. So those would be my two and three. And Drake would fall a little bit under that for, for my liking anyway. But I guess – that's why Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors, right? We all get to pick what we like. <laughs> um, my last question for you, Randy, we really appreciate it. Uh, former general manager Randy Mueller, our guest, he's now with The Athletic. I, I ask this to just about everyone, whether it's on air or off air, when you're talking about improving this offense, and, and we know that 
it was simplified a little bit when Trevor had it at Clemson, but he always had a big-bodied wide receiver. He had a 6'4-plus guy. And in and, and this draft, at least early on, first round, second round, those type of players are available. Uh, how important do you believe it is to, to add a big-bodied wide receiver here with the Jaguars? Here's my big body wide receiver, Evan Ingram. It's, it's, it's a similar skill set to me. I think in this case, you have to be able to catch when you're covered, no doubt. So what you're saying is true. I do think you need to find someone that's always open, even when they're covered. Trevor will like that. He, he'll uh, be attracted to that. I, I don't think Gabe Davis is a bad choice for that. Now, Gabe can run, run well, too, so he, he may be that guy. Um, I just don't know how you how you can not draft fast guys first and that's why that possession guy that guy that can catch when he's covered probably falls behind the the guys who can stretch defenses and who they have to defend you different when you line up with that kind of speed so there's a choice there for me and it's maybe more a personal philosophy than anything else Um, I'd like to have the guy who, who I can go to but I think that guy exists with Evan Ingram yeah and we'll see what they believe Randy Final question for me as far as GMs around the league. Do you have a couple that you think are, are the best as far as year in and year out making their team better? Well, I think each year is such a different – it's a different cat to get to skin. You know, every year is a rebuild for some of these guys. A third of your roster changes every year. So the guys that can multitask can actually make deals and identify talent and be, have some conviction to do it I think makes you the best. I mean, it's hard to say that – Brett Veach isn't one of the best. What him and Andy have done in Kansas City to me has been outstanding. Um, Eric, uh, the guy I can't think of his name now, the guy in Baltimore has done a great job uh, replenishing talent probably as good as anybody. I think Brad Holmes in Detroit has done a really good job too, and Brad's relatively new on the job. I think he's done an excellent job. Um, those guys that are tested two ways, one that they lose players and they can replace them, but yet value – can evaluate and value their own guys to keep the right ones. That's a hard, that's a hard equation to solve on both ends, and, and it's a tough job nowadays, I think, harder than ever before. Randy, thank you. You bet. Anytime, guys. Thanks Appreciate so that. Uh, great stuff there from uh, Randy Mueller, uh, former GM. That, and the guy's been all over. I mean, he rebuilt Seattle. Uh, then he went to New Orleans. He went to Miami. Some may forget that he was actually there when Saban came in, and that was – Imagine drafting Walter Jones, rebuilding up Seattle, having success in New Orleans, having success in Miami, and then all of a sudden Nick Saban comes in and you you lose the final set. Because all of a sudden now, Nick Saban is going to have, he's going to be the Bill Parcells, he's going to be the Bill Belichick, he's going to have, and what we thought Urban was going to do here for one, uh, for one year, he was going to have the final say on player personnel, imagine checking your ego after the success you've had in your career, and then a guy because he didn't hire Saban. Saban was hired by uh, who was it? Wayne Heizinga. I'm trying to remember if, if Heizinga was still the owner of the Dolphins at the time, or it was the uh, the man who replaced him. But uh, that must have been an interesting situation for him. Yeah, and, and yeah, it was Wayne. Um, it's it's interesting because a lot of times in not a lot, but there are times in football. And in sports, when you do have to take a demotion or you do have to surrender some of the power, and how do you deal with that? And for Mm -hmm. some people, they'd rather get another job. For other people, they are able to check their ego, like you said. They're able to realize that if they can work really well with this person, they can do great things. And, you know, what's the most important thing at the end of the day? Is it it your level of power? Is it winning championships? I didn't even reference Tom Coughlin. Mm Mm-hmm who had that responsibility. You know, he worked with Michael Hugh and then Shaq Harris obviously um, was involved. And we had Mark Ross on yesterday, who was part of Tom Coughlin's uh, second opportunity where he won a couple of Super Bowls in New York. Uh, at, at, at that particular stop, the front office was absolutely involved. And then we saw when Tom came back here, he worked in unison with Dave Caldwell and, but Dave and Doug Marone. Yeah, that's when Dave really, I think, Caldwell at the time had to take a little bit of a step back because Tom was promoted over him. And at the time, his direct report before that was Shad Khan. So Caldwell was able to say, okay, this man knows a lot of stuff and I want to keep working hard and and I want us to win. So 
I will, you know, take a step down as far as the leadership role is concerned. It's not a financial situation because Shah Khan will never say no to any amount of money that is there to help this football team. He's liquid, okay? He'll sign checks for all of these free agents. It's amazing. Coaching staff, it, fine. But if you to really dive into it, and you look at all 32 NFL teams, and you look at successful teams, starting with Kansas City, and you look at their front office personnel, it's individual after individual after individual after individual after individual. It's not here. It's Trent Bulky, It's Ethan Waugh. And then it's Doug Peterson. They don't have enough people with opinions in, in front with that staff. And it's more of the Belichickian, you know, I'm, I've got all the say here. Um, look at the successful teams in the NFL and just look at their front office personnel compared to the front office personnel here in Jacksonville. It's frightening. And, you know, we were told there was going to be someone that he was going to report to. Remember that? Then after like two weeks, the relationship was fantastic between Bulky and Peterson. And Shaq Khan said, uh uh-uh, uh, they get along so well that we no longer need Trent Bulky uh, to report to someone else. Um, this football team needs another set of eyes and another set of ears. Well, if they're not going to have that, and it sure seems like they're not going to, then I hope they are working. Much better together now, and I hope that free agency has been a really good collaboration, and I hope that the draft will continue to be a really good collaboration because this team needs another, I think, double-digit winning season in order to get this fan base back the confidence that they had last year. Yeah, I mean, and I, you know, I love the one-horse town. I've already seen. I, I don't know if you've been able to get the same result, but from that first week in January where we got the, that's it, I'm done. I'm not coming back. I'm not renewing my season tickets. Here it is, the final couple of days of March, and I've already seen that begin to evaporate, all right? We're not even in April yet. Can you imagine what it's going to be like after the draft? Can you imagine what it's going to be like once we get to July and things are getting ready to open up again at the Miller Electric Center? These fans are going to come back. I mean, I, I've been here since the franchise got underway. I know you're from here as well. That That is going to happen, so... A double it's digit win. Uh, yeah, it, it is, and that's just, that's the greatest thing about fans, is that it's expected. You say it all the time. You and I were talking about Florida State, Florida off the air the other day, and and you know, I mean, you won't get anyone to admit it today because they won last night. But it was Florida State baseball people that were p owed about the bullpen Saturday on Sunday. And and things that were coming out of their mouth, you know what the – but it changes. You win a game last night and all of a sudden, oh, that Clemson stuff, that's water under the bridge. That's solved. Now, that's why I've always loved fans. They express how they feel, and if it gets to the point where you need to fire someone or bench someone, all they got to do is turn around a day later and win a ball game, and they'll forget about that. That is true. All right, let's learn more about some former Ravens that are now Jaguars when we return right here on Tinsonic Sun on 2.5 FM. Bringing the weekend up, to the weekday. Work on three, work on three, one, two, three, four. 1010 XL. Ever wonder how you can transform your living spaces into captivating works of art? At First Coast Lighting and Fans, they offer a huge selection of high-quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness. Visit their showroom on Phillips Highway at the Avenues and step into a world of quality without compromise. Discover the difference that locally owned expertise makes and let them help you experience the transformation from average to extraordinary. At First Coast Lighting and Fans. We love talking sports on 1010XL and I-9 Sports love giving kids the perfect way to grow up playing sports. Summer and fall registration is underway, and if you log on to i9sports.com, you'll see all they've got to offer for kids three and up. And don't forget to enter 1010 in the promo code for a discount on registration. Year-round sports all across the First Coast from St. John's, Duval to Clay. Summer and fall registration open right now. Fort Family Field in Westside Middle or online at i9sports.com. Get your kids in the game with I-9. 
Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Bueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice a Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. There are three certainties in life, death, taxes, and if you stay in your home long enough, a new roof. Pick it here for our friends at Lockhart Roofing. Nobody better in Jacksonville. How do I know? They are a local certified Master Elite contractor, and that means they have a GAF Master Elite warranty. That's the best in the roofing industry. In this day and age, don't settle for cheaper discount roofers. Lockhart Roofing has been here for decades. They aren't going anywhere. Call my friends at Lockhart Roofing, 994-3851. That's 994-3851. Lockhart Roofing, Jacksonville's best for Jacksonville people. Electricians, innovators, and tech enthusiasts, listen up. Miller Electric is shaping the future, and we want you to be a part of it. From healthcare and data centers, corporate offices, aviation, and industrial facilities, Miller Electric is powering the most exciting projects in Jacksonville and beyond. We offer not just the job, but a thrilling career with great pay and incredible benefits. Visit us at MillerCareers.com to apply. Miller Electric, where your skills meet our vision and equal opportunity employer. The flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Good people drink good beer. And great people drink Mokama, a refined craft brewery out of Fernandina Beach, Florida. Mokama Beer Company brings sophisticated flagship beers, including Cosmico IPA and Dune Garden Lager, to the greater Jacksonville area. Whether you're hitting the water with friends or enjoying a backyard barbecue, Mokama has the perfect pair for your summer activities. Look for us wherever great beers are sold and find your Mokama. E.T. here, and it's time for the Taste of Golf at TPC Sawgrass, April 24th. Join me for fine cuisine from chefs from the top golf clubs in our area, craft cocktails, games, and unique auction items. This is one of the most charitable events in our area. Come network with a sophisticated audience who is passionate about golf and its values, all while impacting the youth in our community. All proceeds benefit First Team North Florida. For tickets, go to tasteofgolf.com. Come on, somebody. Need protection? Call Craig and Christine Kaprosky at Goosehead Insurance. The Kaprosky's are a husband and wife team committed to finding you the right coverage at the right price in just a few short minutes. For home, auto, flood, or specialty insurance, Craig and Christine Kaprosky are the answer. Craig.Kaprosky at Goosehead.com. The 2024 NFL season is approaching fast, and the Jaguars are celebrating their 30th season. Be at the bank for all the big plays and big moments of this milestone year by locking in your season tickets now. With packages for every budget and exclusive perks throughout the season, there's no better time to become a season ticket member. Be at the bank for every touchdown. And secure your seats by going to jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000 today. We'll see you at the bank. This is your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist local sports update. I'm Andrew Gibson for Tintin XL. This update brought to you by Wingstop. Spring practice is underway in Gainesville for Billy Napier and the Gators. Napier with an update on quarterback Graham Mertz and his development with the wide receivers at Florida. Graham Mertz is a very capable passer and I think he's proved over time when the pocket's clean, he can process and distribute the ball. 
we, we still need work with some of these young receivers. We've got some development to do there. But um, Chim DK has been a nice addition. Uh, he, he's proven here just in a couple of days that I think he can make our team better. Gators head coach, Billy Napier. It's 77 degrees at 4 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. Joe 10XL is presented by Barra and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. And what a great one we have. He's a Super Bowl champion, spent 10 years in the NFL. He's now the co-host of the Purple pregame and postgame on WJZ TV in Baltimore. Of course, I'm talking about Cadre Ismail, who goes into uh, the latter part of the afternoon alongside Warren Brooks. I'm Rick Ballou. How you doing, Cadre? Man, I cannot complain. I know that uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the city of Baltimore for the obviously tragic uh, incident that happened uh, yesterday with uh, the Scott Key Bridge, uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge, uh, the the cargo ship kind of doing what it did and collapsing it. And my prayers to all the families that uh, lost their loved ones. Yeah, just awful. Uh, Big fan of Baltimore. Have been forever. Uh, I remember the first time I went there, it was, uh, I think it was 97. That was when Mark Burnell was out. Rob Johnson was in at the old uh, Memorial Stadium uh, for a year when the uh, when the franchise went back to Baltimore. So, yeah, we're with you there. Just uh, uh, j- just an awful event that we all witnessed. Uh, appreciate a few moments of your time. Uh, Ronald Darby, okay, I- I'm a Florida State grad. I remember when he was a shutdown field corner He's done some things the last couple of years playing inside as well. Your thoughts on his move and uh, the Jaguars going out to acquire him? Well, I actually am quite uh, upset that uh, said Jaguars team acquired said Darby because homeboy was balling. Um, really just came on. You know, when, when injuries happen in the league, it's, it's, a, it's about opportunity, and he took advantage of it. And I think part of what we saw last year as far as you know, just the team going 13-4, and four, number one seed and all that was because of guys like Ronald Darby. He was such a, a, a phenomenal player filling in. Um, I know that, yeah, Mike McDonald's not going to be there. Guys like Anthony Weaver, uh, Denard Wilson, they all got, you know, opportunities elsewhere from a coaching staff aspect of things. So this seems like a right opportunity for Darby to kind of spread his wings obviously he gets a, a bump in pay as well but uh to show that yeah he can you know be that 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 bona fide shutdown corner that uh he showed what he was as far as last year on the ravens hi cadre this is lauren we really appreciate you joining us so right now the consensus if you look at mock drafts and, and what jaguars fans think is that the jaguars are going to draft a cornerback number 17 overall to play opposite tyson campbell since ronald darby isn't going to be that cornerback number two But you, I think, feel a little differently than that, right? I think experience matters in this league. And, yeah, corner, you can kind of put a guy out there on an island, uh, depending upon your defensive scheme. Not very uh, familiar with the Jag scheme in regards to their secondary and what they like to do. I know when the Ravens played them, um, you know, it it was pretty much a lot of up front, uh, try to get to Lamar, contain, have a spy on him, and, you know, just kind of, uh, keep everybody in front type of a scheme. But with that said, yes, teams evolve and teams change. But cornerback depth, you can never have enough corners. And so while, yes, the fan base, I'm sure, down in Jacksonville say, oh, we're going to draft a corner. It's going to be great. I also think the fact that you got Darby gives some strong flexibility because no matter what, you're not seeing the back-in-the-day type of uh, offenses. You're seeing a lot of predominantly three uh, receiver formations on a regular and sometimes four receivers on a regular. So, yeah, he's going he's gonna to play a, a, a huge part into what the, the Jaguars are going to be trying to do. Yeah, it seems that the last couple of years when Baltimore and Jacksonville faced uh, one another, uh, the Jaguars went to, you know, the most, you know, three safety looks, maybe even a third linebacker at times that really slowed on that run. With Ryan Nielsen aboard, 
we're, we're trying to figure out, um, you know, what this defense is going to be like. So, you know, back to Ronald Darby, it sounds to me like you think he's still a, a really productive player outside as a corner. Your thoughts on him inside, you know, as a nickel guy, a slot guy, um, can he play that position as well? Honestly, it, it, it depends on what you're looking at. I think if there was that quick, fast receiver, uh, you know, probably not. If there was a guy where it's, you know, kind of hybrid tight end, yeah, I think so. I think he has that physicality to his game. I think he has that uh, smart understanding to his game when it comes to reading different uh, concepts that the offense is trying to do. That's what I, I really believe helped him um, as far as his play last year and, and why he was on everyone's radar. We'll ask you about Devin DuVernay as well, but first I want to ask you about a newly acquired Raven, and that would be a guy from around these parts who we absolutely wanted here, Derrick Henry. For many years, obviously, he tormented the Jaguars as being part of the Titans. How excited are you about the Yuli Bulldozer? Well, I, I tell you what, uh, here in Baltimore, we're, we're kind of smarting over the loss of Kansas City. You know, we had one job. Do not let the Swifties go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> we, you failed. <laughs> we blew it. We blew it in a major way. Uh, Patrick Mahomes did some Patrick Mahomes-like stuff, did what he needed to do in that first half. And to be quite honest with you, I think Todd Munkin would be the first to tell you the Ravens got away from their game plan. And, uh, you know, Gus Edwards, who now takes his talents out to Los Angeles for the Chargers, he only got one carry for 15 yards. And so – you know, the, the talk here in Baltimore was, wow, you know, what what happened? Why didn't we give it, you know, to our running game and, and allow our running game to, to kind of set the tempo and the tone against the Kansas City Chiefs defense that really struggled against the Bills as far as rushing attack? Didn't do that. Derrick Henry was available, didn't trade for him. But offseason, hey, with that bad taste in your mouth comes a – figure of well let, let's change things up and I, I like the change I think he will you know give some defenses some really uh, tough looks because what are you going to do are you going to bring in a you know personnel package that's that's more conducive to stopping him and then that opens up things for Lamar um, I guess I'm, I'm saying there's a thundering lightning type of uh, a mindset as far as running the football but then at the same time that lightning so happens to have a lightning arm as well. So it's not just exclusive to Lamar running, but uh, there's a lot to think about and a lot to adjust when it comes to the running game and Derrick Henry being your featured back. Kadri Ismail is our guest. Of course, the Ravens, um, uh, he is with the Ravens, does the pre- and post-game show on WJZ-TV in Baltimore, and Ronald Darby and Devin DuVernay uh, from Baltimore, two of the newest members of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Again, before we get to Duvernay, just give us a couple of seconds on this new kick return rule because you had so much success in your career as a kick returner. It basically had been eliminated, but now they'll adopt the XFL rule. Have you had a chance to digest this one yet? Man, it's it's been tough for me to watch football games and see that the kickoff return has been pretty much nullified and, and it just – basically goes into the end zone and yeah. you know the guys they they make that letter t with their arms stretched out indicating hey we're not going to return the ball so i'm all for innovation um it does look a little weird um maybe it it, it looks really good with xfl because xfl is supposed to be the anti-nfl if you will and, and and can try some uh different things but yeah i get it as far as player safety um I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they, they did a, a good job of recognizing some of the pitfalls of, of injuries and the big elephant in the room is the concussions that have happened on, you know, the kickoff returns. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I like it. It's an explosive play. I think it, it needs to stay. I think it's, um, it's a game-changing play. And so if it is a scenario where, yeah, you're going to have the kicker be the only one that moves, has the returner – He's the only one on the offensive side of the ball receiving team move. And then you wait till that receiver um, or the returner, I should say, catches the ball. And then you can, you know, go ahead and, and, and go from there. Um, special teams coordinators are, are, you know, a different breed. You know, they, they are creative bunch. And I'm sure they're going to make some creative returns 
But for me, I'm, I'm just glad that there is something of a return uh, as opposed to just sitting there, like, watching that letter, you know, T go up. And I'm like, okay, mother of pearl, give us something. So, and I think it also it will help as far as even special teams, guys trying to make a ball club. Um, you know, a returner might not be, you know, your your third receiver, but he could be your fourth or fifth receiver. He could be your, uh, you know, backup uh, secondary guy who is not just a, a you know, guy who's going to go down there on punt cover and punt return, but he can also return kicks. So I think that there's some good as far as just the, the outside-the-box thinking to keep a, a, a play that I believe is very exciting in football. And we've had Jamal Agnew, who's an explosive returner here, but now having Devin come in, what should fans be excited about for him? So there's a couple of things with Devin Duvernay. I think, um, you know, just, well, number one, he, he's, he's, he has such an introverted personality. You know, it's kind of like hard to, to read him. But then when you see him play, you see he's, he's confident in his game. He's a fierce competitor. Um, from a return aspect, he's made some huge returns for Baltimore in, in clutch moments, which has been, you know, a huge blessing uh, and, and critical times. I think at the same time, um, what I'm hoping for him to get an opportunity of is not just, you know, exclusively special teams, although I think he's going to be phenomenal. I think you guys are going to really, you know, appreciate what he can do as a returner. But I think, uh, you know, whether it be punt return, kick return, receiver, it's where it's at. You know, uh, Trevor Lawrence is, is is that guy. And and when you're talking about, you know, a place to go and, and, and kind of – Show that you you got the skills to to make plays and make plays for a quarterback. Well, you want to go where Trevor is at, and I believe he is feeling like uh, he's going to be home. I, I think that's a, a a safe way to say that he's going to be ready to uh, not only show up as a returner, but also I think can can make some strong plays uh, as a receiver for for the Jags' offense. Interesting. I, I know his catches went down this past year, but uh, a couple years ago. Uh, really productive in that part of his uh, his arsenal as well. All right, final question for you, the missile. Um, I think it was 90 or 91 in Tallahassee, Florida State, Syracuse, the rain. Is, is, out of all the games that you've played in, including a 10-year NFL career, is, is that the game that featured the most rain for you? Honestly, it was, and it was it was nuts because – I had no idea I was going to personally have such a a great, you know, game when it came to um, you know, all purpose yards. Right. But uh, you know, coach Bobby Bowden, you know, rest his soul, my goodness, man, he paid me the most awesome comp- uh, compliment after the game and you know, that gum, that it's smile, he's good. <laughs> I was just like, wow. You know, that that that's coming from, you know, coach Bowden. I I I arrived, if you will. So it 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 made my my world to uh, to play so well that day. Uh, I just remember it was hilarious because we get you know police escort to the stadium. You know we come out of our hotel, which was like a three star, you know Holiday Inn meets Days Inn meets Motel Six. Uh, you're you're nervous. You're not going to make it out of the bed because of all the bed mites in there or something. <laughs> so we get out and all of a sudden you got the the uh, the stadies. There's sitting there waiting for us and I, I i used to always like to take the first bus and whatever and i look at you know one of the troopers and he's like hey congratulations you guys are about to set a record i was like what are you talking about he goes yeah we have a bet every week to can get the team to the stadium the fastest we're gonna get you guys there in record time you're gonna break the record but y'all gonna get broken up when uh florida state whoops up on you and i was like oh hell to the door so i was all <laughs> motivated to prove them wrong we had a strong start, but uh, unfortunately, they got the better of us. So, uh, at least I guess we could say we were the fastest team to get to the stadium of Dope Campbell. Yeah. Woo! Game for us. Yeah, you put up some huge numbers though—a 95-yard kick return. I believe you scored on like the second play of the game on a reception. It, it, that was an explosive one. And anyway, that's going back some uh, some years ago. But uh, we do thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. Appreciate you letting me go down memory lane, and I hope uh, both guys for the Ravens show up well for the Jags. Thank you for your time. All right, thank thank you. you. There he goes, Kadri Ismail. And he said home ball was balling when he was talking about Ronald Darby. 
Love those yeah. comments. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes you wonder, as of right now, Rick, what is Ryan Nielsen thinking about if he had to play a game tomorrow, how would he line everybody up? It sounds like it would be Tyson Campbell opposite Ronald Darby with Darnell Salvage uh, playing nickel. And then, of course, Cisco and Antonio Johnson at safety. And we'll here we go. We'll and that surprised me. You know, I, I thought when they went out and got Darnell Savage that he was going to be the box safety next to Andre Cisco. And, you know, we're all aware that Antonio Johnson uh, was hampered with that hamstring and it, it cost him the first month plus. Then he came back and, and had some experience uh, at, uh, at nickel. So I just, you know, kind of assumed. It. So, uh, you know, but we as, it, it is confusing. And, and I think what it does say is that, Ryan Nielsen's defense is going to be versatile. And as well, he's got guys on that defense that he feels he can move around as well, particularly the five guys once you go into nickel defense. I, I think you're going to see it spread out a little bit. And again, I don't know this. I'm, I'm just talking with people as you do. I'm as excited as I've ever been. Typically, it's all about the offense. You know, can Trevor spin it, wide receivers? Yeah, we had Ridley a year ago. Yeah, I mean, this year, and and even, you know, people won't admit it now, but, I mean, how great was Tank Bigsby during training camp last year? So great. He was sensational, and and I'm not giving up on him, but I'll tell you right now, my my focus right now this year is going to be more on what are they doing on the back half of that defense under Ryan Niels? And the defensive line. Is it going to switch to a 4-3? And so where does Trayvon Walker play? And, and who el- who's the other inside linebacker? You know, there's all those, yeah. not inside, but the third linebacker, the same linebacker. And I wonder, Rick, if the Jaguars don't draft corner at 17. Do we look back to this conversation with Kadri and say, well, it's because they thought they had their second corner all along in Darby after free agency. And so that freed them up to go get – Offensive line, defensive line, wide receiver. Maybe Brian Thomas Jr. is coming to Jacksonville because they believe Darby's going to stop start opposite Campbell. Well, here's a man in the missile, okay, um, Love who watched him yep. play every week. Yep, every and that snap. that's his job to evaluate the Baltimore Ravens. I didn't get one inkling at all that Ronald Darby cannot be a a boundary corner, a, a guy out you know against your number one or number two wide receiver. That that came straight from this man who has followed this team. And you, you heard him say, homeboy was balling. He he didn't want to lose Ronald Darby. I, I've looked at it a little bit differently, but I don't know what Ismael knows when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe this is a, a major upgrade. We'll see. I, RJ, great job getting him. I love when you bring on a guest that you know he wants to be there. Yeah. And he enjoyed it. I mean, we could still be talking to him right now. I think he'd have no problem. Out of respect, we sure. you know try to have people on for 10, 12 minutes and then move along. But uh, he's always been real good. And, uh, of course, his brother was the rocket. And uh, he was the missile. He had a third brother, too. The bomb. The bomb. That's right. Did he yeah. play at Syracuse as well? I don't think he was an NFL guy. Not like the rocket. Um, boy, when I think of the rocket. You know what was so great about And if you ever read Under the Tarnished Dome, it's a great book. Um, uh, about Lou Holtz, and it's, it, it really is. It's, it, it's sensational. Uh, Don Yeager, uh, one of the great authors, uh, sports-related authors of our time, he wrote the book on Warwick Dunn and, uh, and so many others. But you, know, you had Ricky Waters, and you had Jerome Bettis, and you had all these great backs, but every once in a while, Lou Holtz would be, screw that, let's put a rocket in the backfield and just <laughs> hand him the football. Because he was the best player on the field. Exactly, and that's why I think people have always wondered, by the way, the bomb, his brother, played as a walk-on at the University of Texas El Paso. Oh, okay. So, yeah. slightly different. Uh, I kind of wish they did that with Deion Sanders over in Tallahassee, even though they right? had Sammy Smith. Sure. But that's what, that's what Lou Holtz did. He said, nah, yeah. just give it to the Rocket. When you have such speed, you wonder, and we saw it a little bit with, with Ridley this past season. We've seen it with Jamal Agnew, the jet sweeps, right? Like, get the ball to your fastest player in a misdirection type play. But I don't think Percy coaches, Harvin. Percy Harvin was obviously very gifted at it, but it never really worked here because everybody knew no. what play was coming. Well, it was supposed to work with uh, Denard Robinson, right? And they're going to put Wep- him out as the a offensive weapon. The OW, That's yeah, right. the offensive weapon. It, it it didn't sadly. Hey, you want to comment on anything you just heard from uh, Kadri Ismail? You can Randy Mueller his opinion on what uh, he said about the Jaguars a few moments ago. Uh, we'll get back and uh, grab some of your. Thoughts on this as well. 
1010 on the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. All right. You know I hate lists. If you listen to me regularly, I hate lists. I do. I think they're they're lazy for hosts. I, I just do. I think you just steal someone else's material and you basically mail it in. So I very rarely do them, but I'm also a hypocrite, okay? A massive one. And today's list is so baffling when it involves Trevor Lawrence and quarterbacks I think this will completely shock your system. Listen to me. You don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. You need Baloo and Brooks in this list. And it's coming up next. Attention men and women. If you would like to get your hair back, then you need to listen to some of our clients. John in Orange Park. IHRS showed me what was causing my hair loss and helped stop it. Call IHRS now at 904-777-IHRS. Find out how to grow your hair back with a free hair and scalp examination. Mike from Bay Meadows. I finally found the most experienced company who could restore my hair. Now I have hair where I had none before. Results guaranteed. Diane from Ponte Vedra. Now I have what lotions couldn't give me. Thick, beautiful hair. Find out why you're losing your hair and how to grow your hair back. Call 904-777-IHRS for a limited time free hair and scalp examination. Now my hair will grow for the rest of my life. Thanks, IHRS. Thank you, IHRS. Thanks, IHRS, for giving me my hair back. Hurry, this free examination, normally $199, is yours for free and good only through Sunday. For your free examination, call IHRS at 904-777-IHRS. That's 904-777-4477. Call now. When you step into a courtroom, you're stepping into a fight. Someone wins, someone loses. I'm attorney Brett Hastings, and at Hastings Injury Law, We've got the experience you want in your corner if you or a loved one suffer a personal injury or a wrongful death. We're here to fight for you. So if you get hit, hit back with Hastings Injury Law, Offices Jacksonville. Find us on the web at 904hitback.com or call our 24-hour helpline, 904-HITBACK. I'm Taylor Rose with our Remedy Staffing Westside office off of Normandy Boulevard. We are helping great people find great jobs. Remedy has helped some of the best employers in Jacksonville find talented job seekers like you for over 25 years. Our current job openings range from entry-level distribution center pickers to equipment operators. Apply today at RemedyGoodJobs.com. Don't wait. Apply at RemedyGoodJobs.com now. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We're all calling, rolling. The toilet's overflowing. and goo just won't let that water through. You need Roland Reesh plumbing by your side. When you have got a leak and you just can't wait a week, call 260-7059. Roland Reesh plumbing. I'm Hacker and Denny Thompson and I will navigate you through the Florida football offseason during the Gator Bites podcast presented by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. New episodes drop every Friday. Get Gator Bites where you find podcasts. Hi, I'm Sean Monahan from Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach. Since 1977, we've been Jacksonville's family jeweler where our true specialty is engagement rings and custom jewelry design. And now, buy your diamond engagement ring at Monahan's and get any diamond wedding band and men's wedding bands for 50% off. Come in and be treated like family for one of the most important purchases of your life. Buy your diamond engagement ring right now at Monahan's and get any diamond wedding band and gents band for 50% off. Come to Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach or book an appointment at MonahanJewelry.com. Catch Peter's baseball all season long on 1010XL. Brought to you by Farrah and Farrah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. And Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mike Dempsey here for Awaken 180. Many companies promise results, but how many actually stand by it? Well, Awaken 180 sure does. I dropped my 25 pounds, Matt Hayes 40, and Hacker now 35 pounds in his first month alone. Find your results at awaken180weightloss.com. Lauren Brooks here for Hodges Mazda. Why buy from Hodges Mazda at the Avenues? Because they strive to ensure a satisfying and comfortable car buying experience. That's why the sales staff doesn't work on commission, allowing Hodges Mazda to put your best interests first. Whether you're looking for a brand new Mazda or a pre-owned vehicle, Hodges Mazda has a large selection to help you choose from. And every vehicle purchased from Hodges Mazda comes with two years free maintenance and free car washes for life. Now that is peace of mind. 
So visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com. I'm with Greg from Cycles of Jacksonville. I know Honda, they're so cool on the road and off the road, but guess what? Tell them about them being on the water. There is an all new Honda boat coming out. We went out and partnered with Scout, who's been making the finest holes in the business for years. They're fuel efficient, dynamic, and class leading. So Honda is in the boat business, and you will see boats coming to Cycles of Jacksonville soon. We will have them in the spring, ready to go. Cyclesofjacksonville.com. Keep track of all of it. Find them on Atlantic near Regency. Friday on the Frangie Show, tune in for the House Call segment brought to you by Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Rehab. Join the discussion as a JOI expert tells us about baseball and softball injuries. JOI, where the pros go. Here's Linda Beaver. Did you hear what's happening? Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet are spring cleaning. New inventory on the ground means we need to make more room. Take advantage of huge savings on thousands of vehicles priced to sell. New and pre-owned prices have been reduced and all sales associates have been instructed to give maximum value on all trades. But you better hurry, the best deals go first. Head to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville to take advantage of our spring cleaning sale. We're here to wow you. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. All right, Blue and Brooks with you tonight till uh, 6 o'clock along with R.J. Saunders. My name is Rick Blue. Typically with you 6 to 8. That'll be the case again beginning on Monday. Frank and Hayes are on vacation. Hey, congratulations to Dan Edwards, longtime friend of mine. Yes, congratulations. He is one of 15 who will receive the third annual award of elec- uh, Awards of Excellence. Uh, excellence, excuse me. Uh, that'll be on the 26th and 27th in Canton. And the Awards of Excellence has only been around now for the third uh, third time, third year. But Dan Edwards, man, 29 years with the Jaguars. Just um, just incredible. He did so much for this organization. I mean, he got here with Tom Coughlin far in advance of when things really did get underway in 1995. Shaq Khan does say this about Dan, and I quote, I knew within days of meeting Dan Edwards in the fall of 2011 that he was respected and trusted throughout the Jaguars organization, but what I really understood everything uh, that Dan represents was a few months later at the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, my first as a member of the NFL, uh, the number of friends and associates Dan had from other teams, the league office, and the news media in particular was something to behold. No one has that kind of community unless you're the very best at what you do and you're also a good human being while being the best. That's why Dan is honored. There is no one more deserving. Amen. He's such a wonderful person. Like He was so good at his job, obviously. You don't get to keep your job for almost 30 years uh, if you're not, but such an incredible human being. Great mm. father, grandfather, such a great guy. Really enjoyed my time with Dan, especially the years on the road. He, he just, uh, he, he was the best. He was early. We'd be on those bus at 7.30 for a 1 o'clock game, but who am I to complain? I loved every moment of it. I just, I actually, for a year, I lived right down the road from him, um, not too far away from Frangie, out at uh, Jacksonville Golf and Country. Some will say I couldn't find it a year ago. <laughs> Uh, would, when I had a golf date. Some would say that. That would probably be because I had 45 consecutive days and 100-degree temperatures. I was dehydrated. I had no idea where I was. I, kn- I knew I was in Jacksonville. I just couldn't find Hodges. Ah. But yeah. I'm happy for Dan. Great news here. Me too. Happy for him and his family. No doubt about it. All right. Again, the obligatory hate lists, I just do. I, I just think it's a way of mailing it in and not really putting effort into your job. Not for those who create lists. But for us radio hosts who steal a list, okay, this is CB. But we're going to do it anyway, okay, because it's it's so baffling, okay. Is it Chris uh, Trapasso? Yep. Is that how you say his name with CBS Sports? Really not familiar with him. But he, he comes out today and he says, let's rank the top quarterbacks from 20 to 24 draft classes and where you would rank uh, Kale Williams, C.J. Stroud, and others. All right, so the very first guy is Joe Burrow. I'm not going to argue with that. 
Jordan Love, Jordan Love at two. A little high for my taste. Yes, okay. He's only done it for a year. Right. CJ Stroud at three. Okay. Unbelievable rookie year. Drake May, <laughs> who's never touched a football, coming in at four. Justin Herbert. Honestly, I'd have him in front of Drake May. I would have him in front of Jordan Love. Absolutely. Um, I think you can argue the C.J. Stroud situation, right? You can go back and forth. It's probably a good six-pack argument. Caleb Williams at six. Same deal. We have no idea. Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, two years ago, comes in at number seven. Jaden Daniels. could honestly be higher. Purdy could yeah. be higher. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, Jaden Daniels is pro day today. You see the video of his elbow? Have you seen that picture that's gone viral? No. It's one of the crazy, it, it almost feels like it's um, photoshopped. It, it can't be real. Uh, but I saw it on Twitter, so it has to be. Uh, <laughs> Jaden Daniels today, two at nine. All right. Will Levis at number 10. Jalen Hurts, 11. You get all the way to number 12 until the name Trevor Lawrence pops up. Your thoughts? I think that you mentioned right before we went to commercial break that people wouldn't need drugs or alcohol uh, because they've got us in this list. Mm -hmm. I think Chris Chaprasso might have been on both when he was doing this list because I think the, the way I've always looked at it is I don't care how good a rookie is projected to be. And look, C.J. Stroud, was he not even in the top 12? Like, that's another... Oh, he's three. He's third. Okay. Oh, yep. So good. He at least made the list. But he's one of the only rookies we've seen as far as quarterbacks are concerned that has been really good right off the rip. We have no idea, even if Caleb Williams, now surrounded by more talent than Justin Fields has, but if he'll be really good right away, certainly we have no idea about Jaden Daniels or Drake May and the situations that they're going to. You always want to, I think, start with a list of experienced guys. And like you said, Justin Herbert should be much higher on that list. Mm -hmm. I think Tua, now that we've seen him play well for a couple seasons, uh, especially this year being healthy. But obviously, Trevor Lawrence needs to be higher up on the list because everyone knows how talented he is. Do certain things need to be fixed? Yes, Doug Peterson has said multiple times this week, situational football has to get fixed, and he has to do a better job of taking care of the ball. But there are not many NFL teams that would take a Tua Tungavailoa, any of these rookie quarterbacks other than maybe Caleb Williams, ahead of Trevor Lawrence. No. Joe Burrow, absolutely. No argument there based Although on he's what injury he's injury-prone. That, yeah. that would concern me. And it should. That's that's a part of it. And if, if you want to go down that road, I, I'll absolutely listen to you. Um, Jordan Love, I need to see it more. Very, very good. But But, again, this is what you have to ask yourself. Who would you rather have as your starting quarterback, Jordan Love or Trevor Lawrence? Uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, you know, again, as I said, that's that's at least a six-pack argument because I've been getting that forever. I've been getting that in our text line, 641-1010, brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. A week doesn't go by where I don't get the obligatory, hey, Baloo, who would you rather have as your quarterback, C.J. Stroud and Trevor Lawrence? Well, it's pretty hard right now after what we just witnessed this year to say Trevor Lawrence is better than the C.J. Stroud. I, I still, you know, really tussle over this decision. But I, my point is, if you want to put C.J. Stroud ahead of Trevor Lawrence, fine. Drake May? No way. No. Where did that come from? Justin Herbert? Okay. You know, if you were to pull 32 general managers, who would you rather have as your starting quarterback after the body of work? that we have seen with Herbert and the body of work that we have seen with Lawrence, uh, you may get a 17-15 a type of call uh, with those two. Herbert, sure. Caleb Williams, there's hype, but and I've read a few places, and I'm sure you have as well, Lauren, that I've seen the term generational, sure. but not nearly as much as we saw four years ago when, or three years ago when the draft was – Urban Meyer out Correct. there working the pro day of uh, of Trevor. You look back. Boy, how, how things have changed. I mean, when he worked that pro day, I was like, Urban's the man. Yes. He I stood thought I, right by Trevor. I was like, this is incredible. And it was really tight with someone so higher up uh, with his 
football team and we, we were sitting down having a beer and and um just show me communication between him and urban and at, at, at like 3 a.m 4 a.m just so infectious and, and and so enthusiastic and man I ate every yeah. little bit of that he he looked like you know he looked like Patton out there he he looked you know this is the this guy's going to take over the NFL and if we only knew then yeah. <laughs> uh what we knew now Brock Purdy at 7 as good as Brock Purdy has been would you rather have him as your quarterback here in town than Trevor Lawrence I would not, but I could listen to an argument where someone would say that they love him because of the fact that he was able to come into kind of a crazy situation with the 49ers and 4,200 yards, almost 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns, 11 picks. But my argument would be Trevor has never had the type of talent that Brock Purdy has. Thank you. And Kyle Shanahan, as much as I love Doug Peterson's offensive wizardry, Kyle Shanahan is is one of the best, and he's got, obviously, the multiple weapons at receiver. He's got George Kittle, and he's got now Christian McCaffrey. So you give that to Trevor Lawrence, and I'm sure his stats would look about the same. And, oh, by the way, an offensive line, that's a heck of a lot better in San Francisco. Thank you. I think Travis e- I think Travis Etienne flourishes in San Francisco with that offensive line. Absolutely. With the way that they're able to move that football. Uh, does Brock Purdy have the same success here in Jacksonville with this team? With the weaponry on this team, with the defense on this team, no, with the this offensive, offensive line, line yeah, on no this way. team, okay? San Francisco's a better team. So I think you have to take that really into consideration. And, and, and I'm not trying to mock Brock Purdy as a game manager. He is totally overachieved. But again, we're, we're going through this because we're trying to pick your brain a little bit. Just ask yourself that. Who would you rather have? And, it, it, you know, you don't even have to put away your Jaguar fandom. You can do it any way you want. You can be as objective as you ever have been. You know, you have full pick here. Would you take Purdy over Lawrence? Jaden Daniels, love him. Absolutely love him. But, again, just think of the hype of Trevor. When you get into Caleb and Jalen and Drake May and J.J. McCarthy, whoever it may be, just remember the hype machine. Remember the hype machine – a couple of years ago with Zach Wilson and Mac Jones. Oh, yeah. Trey Lance, right? Justin Fields. One of the four has made it. And, hey, the jury's still out on Trevor. Two at nine. I really like Tua. I do. But I'm not taking Tua over Trevor Lawrence. Will Levis? No. No way at 10. Jalen Hurts, there's a good argument. That, that really is. Hurts, to me... I think I'd wrestle over this one more than any. I, out of the out of the quarterbacks that I've mentioned, I'm going, Lauren, I, I'm taking Burrow and I'm taking Herbert over Trevor. I think right now I'd be a fool not to say C.J. Stroud based on what we just saw, okay, because I have to go with what we just saw. But m- I think my biggest struggle would be who would I take? Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, that one's easy for me. I'd take Trevor all day. I think Jalen, similar to Brock Purdy, has been in a really good situation with an offensive line that has a, an entire play named after them in the tush push. I mean, with Jason Kelsey in front of you, the world is your oyster. And obviously he won't have Kelsey moving forward. But the Eagles' offensive line has been one of the best in the league. And I think Jalen has had also really good receivers – since the Titans were idiots and gave A.J. Brown to the Eagles. <laughs> different so, regime. Yeah, different regime. But still, like, you get to throw to Devonta Smith, the slim reaper, and you get to throw to mm-hmm. A.J. Brown. I mean, and they've usually had pretty good backs up there, too. So, yeah, I mean, I think every different – or every quarterback is a different situation. But, look, some people would say Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, they were in a playoff game together. One was up 27 nothing, like we've referenced. And Trevor Lawrence's football team won the game and moved on. So some people would say Trevor is a better quarterback in that situation or because of that situation. So give us your thoughts on this. 641-1010 on the text line. Again, that's brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. Uh, it is Trevor at 12, and this will round out the rest of the list. Uh, AR in Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson, 13. J.J. McCarthy at 14. A lot of people believe he's going number two. Which is wild to me. But going to the commanders. Yeah, we, we heard uh, last, Mueller. We, 40, 40 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Randy Mueller. 
uh, reference McCarthy. Uh, Fields at 15. Yeah, we're getting kind of to the, you know, Bo Nix and Michael Penix, 16 and 17. Again, we just don't know. Then it's Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, and Zach. Well, oh, boy, 21, Bryce Young, top pick, top pick in the draft. That's kind of my point. Yeah, again, environment, not a great environment, terrible mm-hmm. offensive line. but Trey yeah. Lance, 22. But that that's my whole point. Yep. When you, all you got to do is look at Bryce Young when you start talking about Drake May and Caleb Williams and J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix and Jaden Daniels. If if we knew, this thing would be a whole heck of a lot easier. We we do not know. And, and history tells us that maybe one of those five will end up really becoming a good quarterback. Okay, all you got to do is go to the Trevor class. Look at Trey Lance. Look at Zach Wilson. Look at Mac Jones. It just goes... It goes on and on and on, quarterbacks where it did not work. All right, today's show brought to you by Patriot Roofing, uh, located all throughout uh, North Florida. Um, They specialize in all types of commercial and residential roofing and repairs, gutters, sud tubes, skylights, 10-year workmanship warranty, financing is available, discounts for military and senior citizens. Give my buddy Mark Tozzolo a phone call at 982-4052, or better yet, just go to the website, Patriot Roofing. If you need a new roof, they got you covered. If you need repairs to your current roof, they've got you covered. This is good for your home or your business. Just go to Patriot Roofing Services. All right, let's come back. we got much more to do. Let's uh, grab some thoughts from you on this. Again, 641-1010. And uh, that's brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. we got a plenty to do. we got another hour and 15 minutes. Take you up until 6 o'clock right here on this Wednesday along with R.J. Saunders and Lauren Brooks. My name is Rick Bullen. Play-by-play sports just sounds better on radio. For high school, college, and pro sports play-by-play, turn on 1010XL. Mia here, and let me tell you about one of our area's best resorts, the Sawgrass Marriott Golf Resort and Spa. The Sawgrass Marriott is not only a great destination for a vacation, but it is also a great destination for dining on the Florida's first coast. 1912 Ocean Bar and Rooftop is now open on Ponte Vedra Boulevard, featuring Ponte Vedra's only oceanfront rooftop bar and lounge. Serving finely crafted cocktails and delectable eats, it's open daily from 4 to 10 with complimentary valet parking. Get ready to rock your evening with the band Be Easy at Players Grill Mandarin, a high-energy, multi-genre cover band from classic hits to chart toppers. See you at Players Grill Mandarin Friday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets... Attention all business owners. The raining season is coming and it's important to ensure that your property storm drains are free from debris and functioning properly. That's where DuckDuck Rooter comes in. Our powerful VacCon truck can effectively clean out your storm drains and prevent costly damage to your property from flooding. Don't let clogged storm drains ruin your business and reputation. Call DuckDuck Rooter today to schedule a cleaning before the rains hit. 904-862-6769 or online at DuckDuckRooter.com. Round up a foursome of friends and test your aim to help kids succeed. It's the 6th Annual Clay Shoe to support the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northeast Florida and Mackenzie's Camp Deep Pond. The fun happens Thursday, May 13th at Jack's Clay Target Sports. Get your team and the Boys and Girls Club take care of the rest. Ammo, cart, clays, breakfast bites, lunch, and goodies. Proceeds benefit 56 area clubs serving over 5,200 area kids every day. Go to bgcnf.org slash events. Discover the timeless beauty of stone with Art of Natural Stone, offering an extensive selection of products they cater to every design aesthetic. And not just a supplier, they also provide the installation. Skilled craftsmen ensure a flawless finish every time with Art of Natural Stone. You receive not just a product, but an inviting welcome home experience. So embrace the elegance of your own yard this year with artofnaturalstone.com. Open to the public on Phillips Highway and on Beach Boulevard. 1010XL keeps you company with sports takes and local talk. Well, then that's exactly what we'll do. Saturday from noon to 2. Got any ideas who this mystery man might be? It's Compton and Company. What if word about this gets out? On 1010XL, Jacksonville Sports Radio. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from my bookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, Bet the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. 
take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today, only with my book. It's March basketball. That means a host of top teams will be competing for the NCAA title. When it comes to commercial painters, there's also some healthy competition out there. Jason Parker with Performance Painting. To help you know the right questions to ask any painter competing for your business this year, visit performancepaintingjacks.com. Or if you're ready for a friendly quote, give us a call and ask about our free pressure wash promotion for your next project. Performance Painting, quality coatings applied with pride. Performance Painting. To thank you for 40 unforgettable years, Dell Technologies is celebrating with anniversary savings on their most popular tech. For a limited time only, save on select next-gen PCs like the XPS 13 Plus, powered by Intel Core processors and more. Plus, curate your dream setup with great deals on select monitors, mice, and more must-have electronics and accessories. When you shop online at dell.com slash deals, you'll have access to leading-edge technology and free shipping on everything. Again, that's dell.com slash deals. If you've played sports or still lead an active life, chances are joint pain is nothing new. This is Dr. George Barry of Barry Orthopedics, and we'd like to be your option when it comes to taking care of your body and getting back in the game. From shoulders to elbows to hip and knee pain, Barry Orthopedics can diagnose and treat a variety of injuries that are causing you pain. We are Barry Orthopedics and online at barryorthopedics.com. With more than 30 years of experience, our team is here to care for your entire family. Find out more at barryorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. that several Major League Baseball games are getting postponed. The opening day festivities are getting postponed due to weather until Friday. That's really unfortunate for those teams. But you know what? The Rays play in that just lovely dome down in Tampa, the trough. That's absolutely hideous, but at least they have new turf for the season. So maybe that's one good reason to have a dome in Florida. Yeah, and tonight it's Tampa, Boston, and hockey. I just heard from my brother. He's on his way to what he calls the House of Horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Boston did get two late ones last night against the fine Jessica Blaylock, Florida Panthers. But maybe it's the uh, the baseball gods here in the United States of America saying, stop opening up our season in South Korea. Oh, that's what you think it is. Sure. Everything okay. to me is a conspiracy. <laughs> see the Dodgers <laughs> signed Will Smith today, 10 years, $140 million. I did see that. So for those of you scoring at home, yeah. all right? And if you're scoring at home, congratulations. Ten years, seven hundred million for Otani. Yamamoto got twelve years, three hundred and twenty five million. He got lit up. He he threw forty three pitches in one inning. Yeah. He had an ERA of forty five. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler Glass now got one hundred and thirty seven and a half million. He'll be good. Twenty three and a half million for Tio Hernandez. The Dodgers have committed one million three hundred and uh, $1.35 billion in future salaries this winter to those one, two, three, four, five players. Okay. This doesn't even include Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts. Uh, you, you know, they brought back, uh, they brought back um, uh, uh, Clayton Kershaw to a one year deal. You know, he's, he's going to be shelved until at least June. Because he's not 100%, but... And what happened last year? It happened to all of these top teams. All the high payroll teams. You, you had to wait those four or five days because you rest in the first round, and they you ended lose. up losing. Yeah. It's Very crazy. I'm looking at the payroll. The Mets are still the highest as far as this is just the 2024 payroll. Like you said, there's future, future contracts uh, for the Dodgers that extend 10 years, but... The Mets are first. The Yankees are second. The Dodgers come in at ninth 
$209 million for just the 2024 yeah. payroll. That means they've pushed a lot of money in the future. You know what's rewarding about football, whether it's pro or college? It feels like the best team wins in most cases. In baseball, yeah, some may argue Georgia this past season was well, yeah, potentially I, the best team. I think I they got screwed. Mean. You can make the case that they absolutely got screwed. Yeah, and that'll be fixed with the 12-team playoffs. So right. We don't have to worry about that moving forward. No, but, Same with Florida State. Florida yeah. State been in. Well, you know what? I, I, I honestly do believe that if uh, – if um, you know, if if Georgia beat Alabama, Georgia would have gone, and Florida State would have gone. Texas, Texas would have been left out, and uh, and Alabama would have would have been left out. But you know, it, it, listen, credit basketball, the number one, number two seeds, they're all still in it. Okay, they have all advanced. So the selection committee, at least the top part of it, got it right in college basketball. But it, it does. It feels like, for the most part, in football. College or pro, for the most part. I mean, once in a while, you get a TCU. You know, TCU won their first-round game. You know, people forget about that. They, they they won in the semis. In baseball, though, you had these top teams go down. We get in hockey last year. The record-setting year for the Boston Bruins, and they lost to the Florida Panthers in the first round. RJ, we, Miami Heat last year against the Boston. I mean, we, we see huge upsets in basketball, hockey, and baseball – you still get upsets in the NFL and in college football, but I, I, I don't think to that magnitude. Now, I get it. There's less games. You know, we're talking about bigger series here, you know, five-game series, seven-game series. Yeah, so you don't think the Rangers – is what, that's what you're saying. You don't think the Rangers is the best team in baseball? I, I thought the Dodgers would win it. Yeah, they got hot, though, towards uh, the There's playoffs. no doubt. And that series – and here's another thing. How crazy was that series where the road team won every game? Mm-hmm. That was wild. Whatever happened to home field advantage? I mean, around here, week three, Doug, Doug Peterson's like, we got to get out of here. We just lost to Houston in, in Kansas City. Let's get out of here. You want to play at home. In baseball last year, that entire series, all seven games, the road team won. And Ho- hockey's a little weird. Ho- hockey numbers, you can win away from your own barn in the NHL, but you want the home court and you want the home field if you're talking basketball, baseball, football. And we thought the Chiefs, that's why the Chiefs wouldn't win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. They didn't play well enough in the regular season to earn home field advantage. The Ravens did. And the Chiefs still won the Super Bowl because they went on the road and won all those games. Can you even fathom being in the world of college f- football and, and being a Florida State fan and you'd rather play at Florida than at Florida State? Or if you're a Florida fan, no, you'd rather play in Tallahassee than it, I mean. The numbers are telling us in these other sports that it's a little bit more support. And Kansas, yeah, that was the whole thing. Patrick Mahomes never, has never won road. a road yeah. game. Because he's never, yeah, he's never really had to play a true road game. He's always played every postseason game in Kansas City or a neutral site game, a.k.a. the Super Bowl. That was his entire career until this year. And then he said, oh, I can't win on the road. I'll show all of you. I can't win without Tyreek Hill. I'll show all of you. And he did. What impresses you about Herbert? Give me Trevor all day in that scenario, 69-36. All right. Okay. Um, and Herbert, I do think, has had a terrible <laughs> head coach in Brandon Staley. So we'll oh see God, what happens yeah. once Harbaugh comes 94-27, go bolts, Bruins suck. Getting a lot of that <laughs> stuff, a lot of hockey fans. Listen, I'm talking about – Yeah, we're I, in I, Florida. I, you know, like, I, I listed the top 12 guys. I, I – I, I couldn't take Trevor over everyone, okay? I, I said, Burrow, absolutely. I said, I got to go with C.J. Stroud based on re- recent history. The only other guy out of the top 12 and that I said that I would, it, it, you know, wrestle with uh, was Jalen Hurts, okay? That's it for me. Uh, right now, I, I would. By, by the slightest of margins, I, I would take Herbert over Trevor Lawrence. I would, Stroud and, may have a sophomore slump. I was actually thinking about this today. In the shower, believe it or not, where I do some of my best thinking. You're not alone. And 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 this is what is really crazy about these type of scenarios. If you were to ask me, hey, Baloo, will Trevor Lawrence ever win a Super Bowl with the Jacksonville Jaguars? And the bet was 100 bucks, I would absolutely say, yeah, it's $100. But if you said to me, I'm throwing a million dollars on the table, a million. Will Trevor Lawrence ever win a Super Bowl with the Jacksonville Jaguars? I tell you no. 
It's amazing if you think about it that way because everything we talk about betting-wise, whether it's $100 or a $1 million, is who's going to win the game this weekend, right? Who's going to win the game tonight between the Lightning and the Bruins? That's how we do it. But if you ask it that way, situations come into play, including money. And, and by the way, I would be a totally failed gambler if this was my philosophy on doing things. I've always been same money regardless of event back when I played. Some guys will bet 10000 on one game, 500 on another. No, I've always been like, if you, the best thing you can do as a dysfunctional gambler or a degenerate gambler is to know when to say when. I don't like the game. Okay, you have on a normal NFL weekend, you have 16 games, no buys. You should find maybe two or three that you like. There's no way you like all 16 games. You can't. You can't possibly like them all. You find one, two or three that you like. For a million dollars, I'd be forced to say no only because history says it's probably not going to happen. How many Super Bowl winning quarterbacks do we have that are out there right now? Five, if you include... Joe Flacco, right, who's now a backup? Uh, Hell, Foles is out of the league, right? So you've got got Mahomes, you've got Wilson, who it feels like he's circling the train. You got Stafford. Um, Did I forget one? Who else has won a Super Bowl? I mean, they're all gone now. Manning's gone. Aaron Rodgers has one. The guy's played 20 years. He's got one. So... We just listed all these young quarterbacks, okay? Burrow, Herbert, Love, Stroud, May, Williams, Purdy, Daniels, Tua, Levis, Hurts, Trevor. How many of these cats are going to win a Super Bowl? It's crazy. Yeah, and with all the resistance in the AFC and they're already existing, a guy named Patrick Mahomes, that's why the odds are against all of them. Yeah, he's said Flacco. Yeah. So don't ever don't ever ask me if I think Trevor Lawrence is going to win a Super Bowl and put a million dollars on it. If you ask me that question, put a hunch on it. Because if you ask me that question, say a hundred bucks, I'm going to tell you, yes, absolutely. Trevor Lawrence, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they win a Super Bowl. For most people, noon means lunchtime. What's wrong with lunch? At 1010XL, it means prime time. Josie, Matt, Leon, and Mia. Here's to lunch anyway. Lunch, friends, and sports talk. Weekdays, noon to 3 on 1010XL. This is Richard Miller with your Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles Update. At Showtime, we have plenty of Trevor Lawrence items, ranging from cards to autographed memorabilia. One of the more popular Jaguars collectibles has been the Lawrence 2023 Vinyl Figurine. We're open seven days a week. It's showtime. Sports cards and collectibles. Update your collection. For any urological concerns, let Ackerman Urology be your trusted partner in men's health. With offices from Amelia Island to World Golf Village, they treat bladder conditions, elevated PSAs, and ED. Visit AckermanUrology.com. It's tournament time, and Best Bet St. Augustine is your winning destination. This month, Best Bet St. Augustine has a full lineup of poker tournaments featuring $160 No Limit Hold'em, six-hour Ironman on Fridays, and weekly No Limit Hold'em tournaments with buy-ins ranging from $60 to $100. And don't miss the grand finale, our $300 No Limit Hold'em St. Augustine Championship on March 30th with a jaw-dropping $30,000 guarantee. For more information, visit bestbetjacks.com. That's bestbetjacks.com. Pull. Put your team together for Operation New Uniforms Veterans Cup clay shoot on Friday, April 5th. This year's fundraiser will feature celebrity shooters, great food, prizes, and of course, bragging rights for the winners. Enjoy a day on the range and support Operation New Uniform's mission to empower transitioning service members, veterans, and military spouses. Find their new uniform in the business world. Go to ONUVets.org. That's ONUVets.org today. Warm weather means the beach, fishing, golf, and more. Make sure to drop into Dailies and grab a cold case to go. From Bud Light to their seltzer, from Mick Ultra to Modelo, or your favorite crafts like Bold City or Sweetwater. Grab and go at your local dailies. Frank Frangie here. These days, it's hard to know which companies to trust. But when it comes to banking, I trust South State Bank. South State truly values its customers. 
and they work hard to create meaningful, lasting relationships. I love going into my local branch. I see the same smiling faces I've seen for years. South State is the largest bank headquartered in Florida, so they're able to offer all the banking services you need. You can trust South State Bank. Banking Forward, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzi, Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Your doctor today about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit skyrizzy.com or call 1 866 Sky Rizzi to learn more. Pross, I'm thinking about changing my name. Again, you're already the media mogul, the straw that starts to drink, the Duke of Pablo Bay. Now what? Refer to me as Dreamfinders Danny Hicken. What in the blazes? Is this a cash grab? No, it's just that I believe so much in Dreamfinders Homes. 20 locations in Northeast Florida, official home builder of Jags and Gators. Great opportunity for first time homeowners. All right. Dreamfinders Danny, it is. Did I mention the lowest interest rates you can find? Visit Dreamfinders homes.com now let dream finders danny celebrate through the majesty of song dream finders oh, i believe they will build Make your home just right home of the jaguars wjxl am jacksonville beach wjxl fm jacksonville beach hey sports fans this is hayes carlion for qc kinetics make 2024 the year you reclaim your mobility reclaim your independence with qc kinetics Give them a call at 904-274-5522. Great locations in Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. You can get a free consultation and you can get in. They have availabilities. Do not deal with pain. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative, non-surgical, drug-free treatments that deliver lasting results. No more surgery. No more downtime. Knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain. Don't let this pain keep you from living your best life. Again, 904-274-5522, hips, shoulders, elbows. They can all be treated with natural biologics from your own body. Go see them in Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. Again, 274-5522. That's QC Kinetics. Lamb of God and Mastodon live. Celebrating 20 years of Ashes of the Wake and Leviathan. July 23rd, Daly's Place, with special guests, Carrie King and Malevolence, Lamb of God, and Mastodon's Ashes of Leviathan Tour. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Discover the difference that local expertise makes at First Coast Lighting and Fans. Visit their showroom at the Avenues and browse high-quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness at First Coast Lighting and Fans. This is your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. I'm Andrew Gibson for Tintin XL. This update brought to you by Southern Oak Insurance. Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson was a guest of Sirius XM Radio this week at the NFL owners meetings in Orlando. Peterson identified some key areas where Trevor Lawrence can improve in 2024. Understanding situational football, understanding we can't turn the ball over in the red zone and, and we've, we've got to make good decisions here and, and it's okay to run get out of bounds slide it's also okay to throw the ball away so you know young quarterbacks right now it's it's a little harder to get them to understand that in gator basketball news sophomore riley kugel has entered the transfer portal it's 78 degrees at five o'clock time and temp brought to you by bueller air conditioning stay cooler with bueller 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. All right, we're not 
our final hour along with uh, Lauren Brooks. My name is Rick Ballew. Typically with you 6 till 8. That'll be the case on Monday. Frangie and Caroline enjoying their vacation. Uh, we've really gotten into the quarterbacks here today. And Jacksonville, here's the most comforting part of it, is it's a much better starting point, right? Consecutive 9 and 8s, which is really good for this franchise historically speaking and I get it they still underachieved last year that that's the that's the moral of the story but it is a better starting point no one's going to argue with that you know I'm, I'm looking at this draft order and all these mock drafts you know all this talk that Minnesota is going to move up the recent talk that J.J. McCarthy is now going to go second not Jaden Daniels you know with Caleb Williams going to the Bears and the commanders taking J.J. McCarthy uh, Lauren you just look at New England they're going to draft a quarterback. It could be Drake May. Uh, Arizona, all right? And, again, they may be involved in a deal with Minnesota at, at number four. When you look at any one of these teams, the Bears, the Commanders, the Patriots, the Cardinals, the Vikings, drafting a quarterback, you know, four out of those top five slots, any one of those you would rather be in those shoes where you think any one of those quarterbacks is going to come in with that team? And all of a sudden, in a year or two, they're going to be a bona fide playoff football team? So I don't necessarily believe that, but there are people who have comped Caleb Williams to Patrick Mahomes. And if obviously there's one player in the NFL these days you want to be comped to, it's going to be Mahomes. I don't see it. I don't see it either. Uh, I think Jane Daniels will be the best of this crop, but I still would rather have Trevor Lawrence as my starting quarterback than any of the rookie I love Daniels. Yeah, I voted for him for the Heisman. I, I love him. And he, he won a Heisman on a four-loss team. I met with Drake May a year ago in July in Charlotte. And what did you think? Very impressed. Incredibly impressed. Very intelligent. Bigger than I thought. Because he was the second quarterback going overall this yeah. whole time until the very end of the season and people started to shift towards Jaden. Yeah, and now, and now the, and we heard it from Randy Mueller earlier in the program, and now all of a sudden there's like a a, a large thought that J.J. McCarthy's going to be the second quarterback. If you like size and certainly national championship pedigree coached by Harbaugh, then I suppose he's a good guy to have. But everybody said the offense went through Blake Corum and that they dialed it back for McCarthy. So – it's, I think it's one of those you really have to study the tape to figure out in the film to figure out how much of the offense went through McCarthy's arm. It's just a really hard situation to be in. I mean, the Bryce Young situation's been a complete failure in Carolina. It, it cost the head coach their job. They've reshuffled around. That front office, uh, everything explodes. And th- that's where Jacksonville is ahead of most. And, and think about it. I mean, how many great quarterbacks are there Are there really right now in the NFL? Just think of, of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks that we've said goodbye to in the last five years. With Roethlisberger and Breeze and both Mannings and Brady. And, um, you know, Matt Ryan's formally announcing his retirement. Didn't win it. Wasn't his fault. They should have ran the ball, right? They had a 28-3 lead. He's out. Uh, you know, Patrick McHolm... Pat Mahomes is in a, in a in a category by himself. But after that, you just look around this league, it's like, yeah, okay, let's anoint Joe Burrow. Aaron Rodgers at 40? Yeah, no. I'm going to take Trevor over Aaron. Now, Lamar Jackson? Very good. I, I got to go with Lamar that's, Jackson right now. But I still... Yeah, that's the MVP. Right. I always have the fear MVP. factor that he's going to end up like RG3. And I can understand that, but like we just talked about with... Kodrick he's going to have a leg snap. You know. But he now he has Derrick Henry. So yep. he doesn't have to be the primary runner of the football in Baltimore. He's got the Uli Bulldozer there to hand it off to and have that ground and pound. Josh Allen is another guy that I think people would lean towards him of the Bills over Trevor because of what he's been able to do in his size and athleticism. I think if you pulled 32 general managers, it would be overwhelming in support of Josh Allen. I would think so as well. But he's not going to win a Super Bowl. Buffalo is is absolutely, they're the ultimate. Are they cursed? They are. Oh, I feel bad for them because I feel like Jacksonville and Buffalo are kind of similar. I don't. 
Bill's Mafia, they're a bunch of turds. They're they're <laughs> they bar- good fan support. They're bark no bite. Except for when they try to pick up chicks by jumping through tables. That is is that what they're trying to do is pick up chicks? Yeah. I just thought they were trying to impress each other. <laughs> no, that's how, hey, you, it's a very you, frat boy move to you me. You roll in one of those buffalo ladies and they're like, Hey ladies, watch this. I'm gonna jump through a table and they're like, Oh my god, he's my dream. <laughs> Boy, you know, there he goes, Bo. Uh I'm assuming Bo from Buffalo, part of the <laughs> Bo, part of the Bills Mafia. I'm assuming you would rather have Trevor Lawrence than Dak Prescott. He is so underappreciated because he can't win in January. He's, he's good, though. He, he is really good. is good. Kirk Cousins is good. Mm-hmm. I'd they just don't Trevor. get enough respect. They don't. And But it's kind of, is anyone going to sign up for, if Dallas has done nothing in free agency, is anyone going to sign up for Dallas to win it? You know, it's just like Kirk Cousins. Off to Atlanta now. He just broke the back. Is anyone going to sign up for Atlanta to win it? The Atlanta ant- has an easier path in the NFC overall than any team in the AFC does. Who would you take outside of the 49ers? You've got a rebuilding Eagles team. Mm-hmm. The Lions, good this He's year. He's another Packers, really underappreciated year. quarterback. Jared Goff is absolutely underappreciated. And can Jordan Love repeat? We were talking about him previously there's a lot of question marks out there still on a lot of these quarterbacks i would you rather have trevor lawrence than matthew stafford at this point in his career no. yes right oh well, i'd rather, rather have, have trevor, trevor. Yeah. yes absolutely yeah. he's 10 years younger yeah or at least eight years younger and that's that's got to come into play yeah you know and and, and that's going to be really my focus all year on this is that with what jacksonville did in my opinion it still feels like this team is half pregnant because they walk back the offensive line. And it feels like they know something that I don't, or they know something that we don't. And I will category, you know, I will put in a category of we as those who just scream about how bad the offensive line is. They walked it back. Now I was reading something earlier today about outside of Morse. Morris changes things. Yeah, he does. It, but but that's a band aid. I mean that, that that's that's a two year deal for a thirty one year old who could maybe be here for one year. Okay, but but I love the move. It's the best move that they made. Now I was reading earlier today. I don't know who said it. It was someone about final year of a contract for Cam Robinson and Walker Little. Chances are neither will be back next year. And I'm like, well, last year at this time, you can't find a member of this media around who thought that Cam Robinson would still be on this football team in twenty twenty four. We all had that man moved along because of that enormous cap figure uh, that he carried. Now, now all of a sudden, I, I don't think I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. He's become a little bit. I don't want to say he's got a cult following, but all of a sudden, there's been like this total change in Jaguar fans, some Jaguar fans, in their feeling about Cam Robinson that he's got a little bit of nasty. And that he's a little bit of a um, a different type of guy. And I'm just like, how? He was selfish. He cost you four games. He got popped for PEDs. And then he missed five more games because of an injury. But all of a sudden, he's become like kind of like the inner hero. He's a very average offensive lineman. Statistically, doesn't matter where you go, they'll tell you that. He's top five as far as the highest paid left tackle in the in, in the game. But if, if you look at the production that he gives you, he's average to below average. It was Demetrius Harvey of the Times Union who tweeted out, Jaguars have Cam Robinson and Walker Little on one-year deals. Chances are one or both are gone next year. Could be a good time for a complete revamp, and I could see a tackle being enticing depending on which falls to 17. I'd love it. We all want a corner. You, you all. Y'all. How do you say it down here? Y'all. Okay. Because where I come from, we say use guys, right? <laughs> use guys want uh, – you want a corner, you want a big wide receiver. You draft an offensive lineman, I'm going to do the first cartwheel of my life. Oh, okay? that would be pretty. Can we get that on video? No. <laughs> no. Although we'll, I, we'll probably do an earlier show, and I'll be off by the time they selected 17, so I, I may be under the influence of something. Maybe may an opportunity would feel good. Uh, for a video. But you can never have enough offensive linemen. But just – it's, it's funny how things change. Yeah, and the Jaguars could take a tackle, and Cam Robinson might not be playing on the team this year, and maybe Walker Little 
is your swing tackle like we thought, and but it's a different left tackle. It's just do you go into this season with a rookie left tackle and a second-year right tackle when you're super concerned about protecting Trevor? Cam's not going anywhere now. Exactly. It, Trent Bulky has built this team to save his job. Okay, he needs to win this year. So, I mean, look at what he's doing. He's trying. He didn't try to win last year. He he stayed with the. He walked back the team. You know, yeah, it, they it, said we're running it back with as right. many guys as we can. And it and it backfired. And, and and it was a combination of arrogance and ignorance with his draft selections. You got nothing out of your second, third, or fourth rounders. Nothing. Nothing at all. All right, you you can't do that this year. You've got to hit home runs, and if you don't hit home runs, brother, you've got to hit doubles or you got to hit triples. You, you, I mean, you have picks 17, 48, 96, 114, and 116. You can't draft fringe players. You can't do it. You have to bring in guys who can play. You have to bring in a corner. You have to bring in a wide receiver. You have to bring in an interior defensive lineman. You need help on the edge. Absolutely, you need more offensive linemen. You do. But, uh, Lauren, I mean, they got they got a and, – and here's another thing. Why don't we actually save this until we, we get to the other side? Um, you know this, and, and our listeners are very smart. The way that you have success in the NFL is you have a great quarterback and then you have the combination of guys on a rookie contract your first four years. You bring in players free agent-wise that fill immediate holes and you re-sign your own players. You know how many players right now on the Jaguars roster they have re-signed? We said three. Three? Yeah. One of them's a punter. I mean, you're talking about Devon Hamilton, and the jury's out on him. And who else? Due to no fault of his Evan Ingram. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they've restructured some deals with Christian Kirk and some stuff. But what about players that they actually have drafted? Actually, check that. Players that they've drafted and they've re-signed. Cam Robinson. Logan Cook. And Devon Hamilton. That, that, and this isn't on bulky. This goes back to the former regime. I mean, can you give me a playoff team who has three guys on it that you drafted and you re-signed? You've, so they got to decide. Are you going to re-sign Tyson Campbell? Are you going to re-sign Andre Sisco? Are you going to give the money to Josh Allen? Are you going to re-sign Trevor Lawrence? You have until May 2nd to pick up that fifth-year option. Are, are you going to give that now to... To ETN, where the running back position is considered so non-existent, you're going to pay him six point one million for next year. I am. I don't know if he will. Let's come back and carry on this conversation, though. It's good to have you with us. Six four one ten ten on the text line. That's brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures. Satisfy your need for speed this Sunday at Richmond. Yes, sir. Let's get this party started. Woo-hoo! Brought to you by the Plumbers and Pipefitters Local Union 234. Wow, look at that. From Jacksonville's NASCAR station, 1010XL. Craig Franzi here for Stanley Pools. There's a reason so many of my friends and our listeners have had Stanley Pools build their pools and now maintain their pools because Stanley Pools truly cares about their customers. Stanley Pools is locally owned and has been serving our community for 35 years. For all of your pool needs, call Stanley Pools at 269-7277. That's Stanley Pools, a family tradition of fine swimming pools. 269-7277 or find them online at stanleypoolsfl.com. Get ready, get set, and go to the Ready, Set, Go sales event going on now at Arlington Toyota. Arlington Toyota is loaded with fresh, new Toyota inventory. And right now, you can get interest rates as low as 4.9% for 72 months on select new Toyotas. Plus, get credit help with Arlington's pre-approval program, and every new Toyota comes with Arlington's lifetime warranty. It's the Ready, Set, Go sales event in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard, and online at arlingstoyota.com. Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, make them your AC partner with honest cost estimates before they start the work with no hidden fees. Call 777-4300 for Florida Home AC. PRP treatment is kind of the thing these days. 
and in many cases, it eliminates the need for surgery. This is Sheridan Tutin, and my experience with PRP from Southeast Orthopedic Specialist has been nothing short of great. I'm really feeling much better now. Ask your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist doctor about PRP treatment. This is Dr. Kevin Murphy with Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, where athletes are treated like pros. Relieve pain and get back to life. SOS. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. Get recruiting tips and advice from area coaches, pros, athletes, and their parents. Plus, better ways to train as B3 betters Jerry and Sanders and A.D. Robbins host the Amateur's Ed Show, Saturday from 11 to noon on 1010XL. If golf is your thing, you'll want to check out the 2024 Hills Pass at Hidden Hills Golf Club. Unlimited golf, including golf car and preferred tee times for just one low price. Visit us at HiddenHillsGC.com to purchase your Hills Pass today. I'm here with Clayton Bromberg of Underwoods. You hear about guarantees and warranties. What is Underwoods policy? Frank, to talk about guarantees and warranties, you have to look at our history of over 70 years in business. Underwood's entire reason for existence is and has been to offer fine products that will be used with such satisfaction that both the giver and the receiver will want to come back, and hopefully they'll tell their friends about us. To do this means we've got to try our hardest to satisfy every customer. All of our people understand that. Now, I'm sure over the years we've made a few mistakes, but we've never failed to make good on any Underwood product that was returned with a legitimate customer complaint. Our entire reputation would mean nothing if we didn't conduct ourselves that way. Simply put, conducting our business with integrity is a lot more important to Underwoods and our customers than all the guarantees, warranties, and contrived legal obligations in the world. And you've got Underwood's word, my word, and all of our people's word on that. Underwood's in San Marco, Avondale, and the shops of Ponte Vedra. Get ready for an unforgettable musical journey with the incredible Claire Vandiver at Players Girl Mandarin. Influenced by indie rock to modern pop, Claire's unique sound is a breath of fresh air. Come listen to Claire Vandiver Friday, March 29th at 8 p.m. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. When it's time for the March Mania brackets to bust wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. <laughs> Fortis offers. And when the madness starts and Cinderella <laughs> man steps under the... <laughs> BetUS always has your back with... <laughs> back to back to back. 125% sign-up bonuses on your first three deposits. <laughs> and even 10% gambler's insurance. <laughs> BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game... <laughs> Join today. BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Go 10 XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. <laughs> Saunders, I'm Lauren Brooks, here with you all week long while Frank and Hayes have vacation days. I need to add Dewey, undrafted free agent ah. resigned. Although well, he so went around. He wasn't drafted. No, he wasn't drafted, re-signed. so he wasn't there for the four, four years of his rookie contract, but he deserves credit. And this year, Daniel Thomas was brought back. Special teams ace, so a gunner. Um, gave the Jaguars defense 11 snaps in 2023. But, but he's a special team. Oh, yeah. he is. He's and good. He had a big fan. Really good game. I'll never remember exactly which one it was. but Big fan. Uh, he had that play where he was – it was a home game, and he was a gunner, and he made a great special teams tackle. Right. That one game, you know. You remember it vividly. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. 
Uh, we were talking earlier in the program about the Jaguars and the disaster of that 2018 season. And, and Rick, I don't know if you remember your exact predictions for the record that season. I predicted the Jaguars to go to the Super Bowl after okay. the 2017 season. Uh, that was idiotic of me. Right. Uh, but certainly things fell completely apart. And we talked earlier and, and played the clip of DJ Chark talking about how the defensive line thought they were the reason that the defense was so good, Saxondale. And then you've got the, the secondary, including Jalen Ramsey. They thought they were the reason the defense was so good. And so they were almost at war with each other within the locker room. And it, as we go down memory lane, it's just – it's sad how – that run of 2017 only lasted that one season. And I think people, it's different how it went this past year, but I think people still say, whether it's inside the fan base or from afar, same old Jags. They got good for one season, and then, yep, they didn't make the playoffs the next. 2017 to 2018, 2022 to 2023. And they went for it, and they came up short. And, you know, there'll be a lot of fingers to this day that'll be blamed uh, to the officiating, the horrible, off, you know, the horrible pass interference call on uh, on Boye. And, and of course, Miles Jack wasn't down. That, that's what we all remember. And third and 18. Third and 18. Yeah. But the blame for me is twofold. It's Nate Hackett and it's Doug Marone. They sat on a lead. Yes. Their last they four drives, they ran first and ten all four drives. Passed on second down, passed on third down. They tried to take clock and walk away where the, you could have you could have cut the head off the snake right in Foxborough. And I want to tell you, man, when John Bon Jovi stood up in Robert oh. Kraft's box, that was a sideline reporter. It, it, it was intimidating. It was infectious. But Jacksonville had a chance. And, and, and – they let it go, and to this day, I'm convinced, even though I, I don't think he's ever been asked it here because it, even his initial press conference, but Doug Peterson had to watch that film as he faced the Patriots two weeks later and beat them. You know what Doug Peterson did in Philadelphia? He tried to beat the Patriots. They won that game 41-34. Doug Marone and Nate Hackett did not try to beat the Patriots. They tried to sit on a lead. And it was the most gutless, pointless, effortless coaching attempt that this organization has ever seen. And frankly, it's unforgivable as far as I am concerned. I think it's because the way the Jaguars beat the Steelers, they were able to keep running the football with Leonard Fournette and win that football game, win both of those football games. And that's my opinion is that they looked at it and they said, we're going to use the same game plan. And they weren't smart enough to realize that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, you can't just run the football on them in the second half and go on to win. I.e. look at the Super Bowl where the Patriots were down 28 to three to the Falcons and came back and won. Yeah. And it, you know, the 10, three win here over the bills was yeah. an abomination. I'm happy for Jaguar fans, but I mean, feel free to pick up a first down and give and give your crowd, a, you know, an opportunity to make some noise and and enjoy themselves. It, you saw it right there. It was like, whoa! And then, yeah, everything changed a week later. I mean, it was it was Leonard Fournette's best game ever uh, as a Jaguar. But you know, DJ Chark goes back and and he talks about that. And whenever I mention animosity and problems that were happening within that team I feel like there are others like yeah you don't know what you're talking about they're all dogs no you they weren't together they were not together it it was a it was a defensive team with very strong personalities but also some really bad guys on the team some really unlikable guys on the team that you know Jalen Ramsey's a very unlikable human being right uh, that's just that's fact. It, he is. And when Calais Campbell's going to try to talk and say something, how do I? It, Jalen Ramsey's laughing at him, right? Aaron, Aaron Coven would laugh at him. Telvin Smith would laugh at him. Unique Ngakwe would laugh. At, Unique Ngakwe fought everyone. He fought Dante Fowler. He fought Marce. It, it was just a different group. I. It, and the whole reason why we brought this up, we want to play this clip for you. The second part of it. As a matter of fact, let's play that now. This is uh, DJ Chark. Last night on Marlon Humphreys' 
podcast. He had this to say about the 2018 Jazz. I remember two people arguing over who uses the uh, who uses the handicap shower <laughs> because the handicap shower always had the little seat that you can like shower in. You can take the seat. Yeah. And like a player claimed that this is my shower, and so when somebody else used it, it was a problem. Oh, oh, they couldn't use it at all. At least not when he wanted to use it. <laughs> there, there's some people that have. Sis used to be like that, I'm pretty sure. So I remember seeing but not that. Not like that. I it was like that big of a deal. It was crazy. I enjoyed it, though, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't really have a big role on the team my rookie year, so I'm like, this is what the NFL is? Okay. Entertaining. Very entertaining. Um, DJ was so unassuming, really shy. I am completely blown away that he's the man that came out and said this. And, and I guess for our new listeners, we, we, we probably need to play the, the main part of, of all of this that, that um, you know, honestly really supports what I've been saying forever. I, 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 just, I think there's an assumption that you have a team and everyone loves one another and everyone plays together uh, as a unit. Um, this football team was fractured. This football team played hard on game day, but there were a lot of malcontents on the team. You ever go into the locker room and see how aggravated Jeremy Parnell used to get because his locker was next to Jalen Ramsey when the media would circle Jalen Ramsey? I mean, Jeremy Par- Parnell was a was just a miserable human being. And little things like Leonard Fournette who would say, I'll pay the fine, I refuse to wear a tie on the road. Who the hell are you not to wear a tie on the road? If everyone on the team is wearing a tie, why won't Leonard Fournette? So anyway, let's go back to this point. This is the first part of it, the Marlon Humphrey press con- or, uh, podcast and uh, what DJ Chark had to say about the defense. This might be like OTAs. The D-line would be beefing sometimes with like the corners. They had a really good defense, Saxonville. The linemen are like, we getting all these picks and takeaways because we getting to the quarterback. Corners are like, y'all getting these sacks because we're covering everybody. Is it the D-line and making this defense good or the DBs? That's toxic right there now, y'all. Nah, that was... Wow, we usually just be like, you know, we working together. That was A.J. Bowie and Jalen Ramsey, though. It was tough. That was... They, that y'all had... But right. that D-line was good, too, exactly. though. It was. It was. We had Calais, Malik. So the misconception, Lauren, you know, I, I, I and, and the the only reason why this came up is I, after Doug Peterson spoke earlier in the week, again, the whole leadership role came up with Eric Armstead, and I'm like, let's just pipe down on this. I think it's so easy to say, but I think it's totally overrated, and the greatest example of this is Calais Campbell, who to this day will be considered one of the greatest leaders that this football team ever had and if you're in the 72nd row you believe that or if you're on your 14th Miller Lite at the bar you believe that but with my two eyes and my ears that was not the case the Jalen Ramseys and the Telvin Smiths they laughed at Calais Campbell they thought he was grandfatherly so just to be under this the assumption that Eric Armstead's going to come in all of a sudden the, this football team is going to be like wow we got a leader and wow, everything's going to change. The side that I do agree with, though, Lauren, there's better human beings on this team. There's better human beings on the current Jaguars football team than there was back in 2017 and 18. Yeah, I mean, Foya Luakin is a great human being, and he's your middle linebacker. I think Devin Lloyd's a really good guy. I mean, we could go through the the entire roster. I think, yes, they're all good human beings, and it, that wasn't the case back then. I think Eric Armstead is is coming in here as a, an excellent defensive tackle, and this team hasn't had an excellent defensive tackle since what Marcel Darius? Because mm-hmm. I I still consider Calais more of an end than a tackle. So right. to me, Armstead is is a guy that's going to provide the interior, the defensive line, with something that it hasn't had in years, and certainly hasn't had with Doug Peterson at the helm. If he provides leadership, and and especially with his off the field stuff, the Walter Payton Man of the Year award. And things like that. That's great. I love it for our community. But as far as on the field goes, I just want people to watch him work and watch how talented he is. Hopefully get better watching him and let that translate to wins. Devon Hamilton was really special in August over at the Miller Electric Center. I mean, he was the best lineman 
on that defense before the injury. You, you hope that he can respond. You know, they had to cut bait with Big Foley. It, it just didn't work out with him. Um, but that becomes all of a sudden another issue. You know, you, you, you're scrambling for bodies there. Uh, Tyler Lacey used a fourth-round pick on him. Is he going to give you anything this year? Ledbetter had probably the best year of his seven-year career. Um, but again, he he's basically a snap count guy, right? Gives you a few plays here and there. And then all of a sudden you start talking about guys like Gotsis, who I understand is more on the edge, but you can kind of mix and match with those guys. It's a clear need. They, they have to get themselves uh, another defensive lineman. And, you know, this is one of these deals where I want to be wrong because I respect Doug Peterson. And Doug Peterson came out and said – that there are things that leaders on a football team can do that us coaches cannot do, okay? You've gone through now three consecutive coaches where they are absolutely players-only coaches. Gus Bradley was the ultimate players coach. Doug Marone was a total players coach. Hey, coach, your players got arrested. They're at a bar, you know, uh, they're at an underground strip club in London. Oh, that's my fault. Hey, Doug Marone, your guys dropped six passes on Sunday. Oh, that's my fault. Doug Marone, you had four false starts. It became, it became too ordinary to the years. You know, we've heard it enough. All of a sudden, you take too much response. He's a player. Doug Peterson's a player's coach. I think you saw it with me this year. There were a couple of times where it really felt like postgame. Doug was ready to explode. Or Doug was ready to kind of let the cat out of the bag. But he didn't. You know, he, he took a big breath of air and instead said, he, you know, we got to get out of here or, you know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. But it, it um, I don't know. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope this leadership stuff really does work. I, I, I hope it does. I, I just think today's athlete, man, they're so invested in themselves. They, they care about themselves. I, I, I don't think they cared about the team the way that way they once did. I'm not saying this about Jacksonville. I'm saying this about everything. I'm saying about every every game that we cover. It, it's just, it's today's young athlete. They care more about themselves and their money than they do about actually winning as a team. It, 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 we've been heading down this road forever. All right, what do we got? We got tickets for crying out loud over there, R.J. Saunders? What do you have? Absolutely. So, you know my show, Open Gym, uh, oh, yeah. Sundays at 11 here on the Superstation. Uh, we did a ticket giveaway for tonight's Golden State Warriors game. But I had a second ticket giveaway that I didn't do for ah. April 1st against the Blazers. Be caller number 2641-1010, and those tickets are yours. Woo. That's really nice. The Orlando Magic. So where are they right now? Battle in the Knicks? Is that is that the way it's going to work out? If the playoffs started today, they'd, uh, they'd face the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. Boston had a 30-point lead two nights ago against Atlanta. You know what they did? They Choked. Didn't, they didn't play as a team. <laughs> oh, you know what they didn't do, Rick? They didn't know what it was all about. Yeah. Remember Norvell? Oh, yeah. Really, you don't know what it's all about. Oh, my, yeah. Apparently, he does now. I mean, they're what, 24-3 and three over the last? Uh, yeah, turn it around. 23-4. Oh, and four, I don't know what they are. Some, something crazy. Those phone lines are lit up. They want to go see the Magic play host of the show. Look at that. We use it. Oh, yeah. And you get to talk to R.J. Saunders. So, we got much more to do. We got our final segment coming up. And then it's Hacker Nation here at 6. Fish are good at hiding. Captain Kevin can help you find them. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. Find more fish on the Ring Power Fishing Forecast Show. Thursday nights at 6. Brought to you by Awaken 180 Weight Loss on 1010XL AM. This is Brent Musburger's Action Update. Brought to you by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing Septic and Air Conditioning. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now here are the latest lines from My Guys in the Desert. At the Major League Baseball season, starting for most teams on Thursday, Aaron Judge is the betting favorite to finish the regular season with the most home runs of anybody in the league. Judge is at plus 700 to be the home run champion. The Mets' Pete Alonso is at plus 800. Kyle Schwarber of the Phillies, plus 900. Matt Olson of the Atlanta Braves, also plus 900. While Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros and Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who will only hit this season and not pitch, both are plus 1,100 to be crowned this year's home run champions. 
This update brought to you by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing, Septic and Air Conditioning, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm Tony Desiri with your VEASAN Action Update on 1010 XL. Hey there, Jacksonville. With scorching temperatures just around the corner, it's crucial to ensure your AC is blowing nice and cool. Duck Duck Air Conditioning is here to keep you comfortable all summer long. But don't wait until the heat gets here. Our service techs are ready right now to handle any cooling issues you may have at your home or business. Call Duck Duck AC today at 904-862-6769 to schedule. That's 904-862-6769. Duck Duck Air Conditioning, online at duckduckac.com. Discover the difference that local expertise makes at First Coast Lighting and Fans. Visit their showroom at the Avenues and browse high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness at First Coast Lighting and Fans. This is Joe C. from XL Primetime and stoked to crank up the 9 after 5 once again at the Golf Club of Southampton. Every Wednesday, a little after 5, the gang at Southampton will be hosting us with a new game, and I'm inviting you to be a part of it. Now, through the summer stretch, break up the week with a little hump day fun every Wednesday. Call 287-PLAY to get on the tee sheet. There'll be food afterwards and prizes, including playing for a membership at the Golf Club of Southampton. Call 287-PLAY and hit the tee with Joe C. Hey, Jacksonville, I'm sure by now you've seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We are an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We are committed to customer service, reliability, and have unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today. GFL, green for life. Remember that the Big Diamond Store doesn't want you to shop and compare. They know they can't beat Beard's Diamond's prices. Right now, it's 0% financing for five years, plus get zero down on everything in the store. Don't buy anywhere until you shop Beard's Diamonds. From happy hour to late night fun, Anheuser-Busch wants to remind you it's better to take it easy and be in for the win. That means you had a good time and you got home safely. So know when to say when and be there for the next big time by designating a driver. Here's another remarkable success story from QC Kinetics. This one from Chad, who hurt his knee at the gym one day, and it just kept on hurting for months. From my high school football and wrestling days, I already had a little bit of damage in there, but this just sent it over the edge. Chad tried traditional treatments with no improvement when he turned to the non-surgical regenerative treatments at QC Kinetics. It was really fascinating how they did their work, and the science behind it was very intriguing, and it works. Extracting the cure out of my own body blew my mind. It's like I'm brand new again. It was fantastic. That's because the QC Kinetics natural biologic treatments use your body's own healing power to restore damaged tissue in your hips, shoulders, back, and knees, providing long-lasting relief. Now I'm back at the gym. I'm 100% feeling great. If you're tired of suffering with pain from arthritis or injury, call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. Bring your marketing to the next level with 3D Digital, your local video production and digital marketing agency that specializes in ensuring your brand's story is seen, heard, and remembered. Our award-winning team creates professional content that will be launched across multiple platforms to precisely target your audience. Call us at 904-712-4004 or visit 3digital.com to define, design, and deliver exceptional results for your business. Shrimp the Jumbo Shrimp Baseball presented by FIS with tickets starting at just five bucks returns this month to 121 Financial Ballpark. Opening weekend is set for March 29th through the 31st. Come early for the opening day street carnival and stay for the fireworks. Tickets for all 75 home games are on sale now. JackShrimp.com, Jumbo Shrimp Baseball, affordable, family fun. XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. One second to go here. Rick Ballou, RJ Saunders. I am Lauren Brooks. 
Rick, I've got a headline for you that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Have you heard of the North Wilkesboro Speedway? It's in North Carolina. I have. Okay. Wilkes County, North Carolina. Well, here is the headline. Sinkhole unearths rumored moonshine cave underneath front stretch grandstands. Really? A sinkhole unearthed a 700-square-foot area that they noticed because there were cracks in the original concrete stands in this one section, and people believe that that was an area that was run for bootlegging back in the Prohibition area. And so That's moonshine, what I was going to say. Yeah, moonshine went in and out of there, and I guess this specific track had been closed for 50, over 50 years, reopened in 2022, and so, yeah, they believe moonshine was hanging out in the speedway. I mean, that's pretty genius. So cool. Yes, I always I've watched that show, Moonshiners. Gibby's so from there. Yes, he's from uh, Gibby's. Boone, Gibby's North Carolina. Bended elbows with the uh, with tickle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who was the old guy? He actually knows the real old one, like the original bootlegger. Yeah, letter. I know who you're talking about. I haven't seen it in six, seven years now. It's been. Yeah, I think it. It's. Was, was it Tom? Was it something Tom? I don't know, but uh, I always enjoyed that. And and you know, it's Tim Smith. Was that the one? No, he, really he was the guy he that was. The overalls. I actually guy. saw him at the Daytona 500 a few years ago. Okay. Right behind uh, Henry. Was it Henry? Uh, the uh, you know the tier there with Miller Lite. Um, Jim really? Tom, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, there was Did you Jim just say Tom. Jim Tom? I said Henry, but Jim Tom was also one of them. So, yeah. I think... No, it was a real older guy. I, okay, can't, yeah. I can't remember Jim it. Tom, I think, might have been it. But uh, I had a friend who, when she got married, her husband's family owns a farm in Florida. And so part I'd of have been Popcorn Sutton. Okay, yeah. That was another one. Yeah. I, I remember all those guys. Um, for her wedding, they had buckets of homemade moonshine with all the different flavors. It was one of the best weddings I've ever been to. You know, I went to, and I bet, I I, I watched it for years, and I, I was always amazed because there was that cop that was always, like, right on their trail. Right. Okay, for somehow the videographers, <laughs> they had everything there, and the cop was, like, so close to nailing him, but he never got him. No. They always found a way to escape. I was at the very the, end of the program. Cheered for the moonshiners too. Oh yeah, you got to choose That's uh, how they the survive. bad guys here. Absolutely. I mean, when it comes to things like prohibition, absolutely. As long as you don't abuse it, uh, I think that uh, we all could go for a stiff drink <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Say hello to Ryan the Hacker Green. He's drifting away to nothing. Look at him. Yeah, I've enjoyed a stiff drink every once in a while. Not recently, however. Hacker, did you just call in and win those Orlando Magic tickets for Monday night? No, no, I thought about <laughs> it. Uh, Magic got a big one tonight. Golden State's in town. So, uh, look, right. it's fun to have Magic basketball that's relevant again. And we'll welcome the bandwagoners. You know, we don't need to talk Magic okay. basketball when they're bad, but when they're good, obviously a lot of people here in Jacksonville begin following them, and that's fine. We love it. Absolutely, yeah. Hacker, I know, like you, I got a lot of Florida State people in my mentions. Very happy about their baseball team getting Florida last night. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, so, I think, Baloo, you were on this tweet. Um, right. Some guy this morning's like, oh, y'all don't ever want to mention Florida State. Run ruling Florida. You would have mentioned it if it's vice versa. <laughs> and I had had enough of that guy, personally. Okay. So, I went back into my show last night uh -huh. and clipped out a 20-second clip of me literally talking <laughs> about Florida State run ruling Florida last night. Because, I mean, people sometimes hear what they want to hear, right? Of there, there's a narrative about some of us that I'm a Gator homer, and that's fine. You know, whatever. I guess 21 years, you earn that sort of rep. But, no, give Florida State credit. They absolutely annihilated the Gators. Link Jarrett's 2-0 and against Florida this year, and they deserve their flowers for that performance last night. <laughs> flowers. I like that. Well, well done. Yeah, it was an enjoyable evening, but on to Louisville. A big three-game set that begins tomorrow. That is big. It doesn't get a whole lot bigger than Florida State and Louisville in ACC uh, baseball. How about tomorrow? We've got uh, first, uh, you know, first games of the Sweet 16, and we've got apparently Major League Baseball, which is going to start officially in the United States of America, but rain all throughout our great country. That's why you got to play in the trop. That's what I. Four ten, first pitch. Blue right. Jays, Rays. I'm excited. I'm fired mm -hmm. up. 
Yeah, what's the guy? Elfin? Elfin? What's his name? Zach Zach Eflin. Eflin. Whatever. I'm learning. (laughs) Zach Eflin on the mound. They lost glass now. I got to learn all these new guys. Well, the Red Sox are in Seattle. It never rains there. (laughs) But but I think they I think they have the retractable roof in Seattle, right? I I gotta believe they do. Well, it must be real safe. Go. It must be really bad weather, as you mentioned, for to already cancel the game in Philly and in New York. Twenty four hours. I love it before the games are played. Those people are so angry anyway. (laughs) What are they expecting up there tomorrow? Yeah. Well, I mean, people do have radar. They well, they I know, can't predict but it this far in normally twenty four hours. That's that's quite yeah, a, a prediction. You, but I think because it's opening day, this isn't just you know a regular baseball game out of the one sixty two. So my guess is that they they know that they don't want people venturing out in that type of weather. I asked Heidi Rick real quick about Red Sox and about their chances, and she didn't seem too uh, high of expectations coming into the year. Is that- no. Pretty accurate. Things right now up there are not good if you are a Red Sox or Patriots fan. Yeah. All right. Celtics have the best shot. Celtics have the best chance. Bruins, there's just no way. I mean, it's just not. It's not going to happen. I, I, you know, I've seen one in 51 years. Well, every time you fly into Logan, they got 700 banners (laughs) of all the championships those teams have won in the last 20 years. So. I guess it's good to maybe a little suffering. It's been a little will take drought, place. though. I, it's been a little bit of a drought. All of a sudden, it's have they won one since 2020? I don't think they have. Um, is that the, was that the Bruins or who was the? No, I mean the last year the Patriots won. How long, what was that? Five years ago now. Brady won with the Bucks in 2020. COVID it was in year. 2020. That's it. Was, yeah, Brady won with the Bucks. In so he won in 2019. So been, yeah. Wow. So that's yeah. been it. Yeah. I, I haven't won a title in any sport that I've followed a pro team in my entire life. And uh, Boston people are worried about five years. Is that really the case? Well, I mean, the Orlando Magic and the Jaguars. Yeah. Wow. Magic, 35 years. They've gotten to two NBA finals, and the Jaguars. You like the Lightning? Big Lightning fan. Big (laughs) Lightning fan. Particularly when it gets to, uh, oh, I don't know, June, and I can watch the Stanley Cup. No, you know what? In all honesty, I actually did go to Stanley Cup uh, game two back in 03 when they beat Calgary, 03, 04. I was all into Vinny LeCavalier and Martin St. Louis. So I can't say that I'm a big Lightning fan, but I did enjoy the Stanley Cup game that I went to. All right, what's coming up tonight? Yeah, a lot of Jaguar talk. Luke Easterwing of Athlon Sports will join us to not only talk Jags, free agency, but the fallout from the draft. And uh, Jake Chapman, who is the voice of the Orlando Magic on the radio side, will get his thoughts heading into the Golden State game tonight and kind of where Orlando stands now, 10 games to go in the regular season. All right, Pat, enjoy it. Thanks, guys. That's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we got two more days of this. That's right. Two more days in paradise. Then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programs beginning next week. Thank you to Kadri Ismail from joining us. Does uh, television out in Baltimore. Talked about um, two or two newest members of the Jaguars, Devin Duvernay and Ronald Darby. Randy Mueller, former GM, the Dolphins, Saints, and out in Seattle. He is with The Athletic. We appreciate him. As well. Thank you to Lauren Brooks and RJ Saunders. My name is Rick Ballou. We'll do it again tomorrow at 3 o'clock.